Yo! Four. four. <laughs> I'm gonna count. Three, two, one. Hey, yo! Hey, how's it going, y'all? Welcome back to Cinemana. I'm Nicholas. I'm Ellison. And we're here to talk about what we do. Yeah, usually, pretty much. Which is, you know, film stuff, movie yeah. stuff. Yeah, film, TV, TV series, all you know, of it. Life's depressing moments. I mean, uh, no, we'll get there, though. Uh, <laughs> it's all intertwined yeah. a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's start off with some industry news. Now you've done more research with the news than I did. Yeah, yeah I so uh, I guess <laughs> I haven't done that. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I guess I'll start off. So uh, we got Squid Game two. Okay. Some new, you know, not really much news. Netflix dropped a little bit of a title card teaser. Okay. With that, you know, the robot that does the red light, green light. Yeah. You know, it just dropped the eyeball and it basically said Squid Game. So, yeah, you know, it's like a new, I guess, a new one until the end. Okay, so I think yeah, we well, knew that. We saw after, that coming. Yeah, after the end of the uh, last one, where you know, okay. he, and, you know, gets all destitute and disheveled and wanders around for a year broke, and then he gets no into a business. Guess what happens at the end? I, so. I, I have not watched it. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I haven't watched it, man. All right. Well, I know. I knew there was a big buzz about if it. If I haven't seen the boys and, and you haven't seen Squid Game, I mean, I guess we could it's call it. Out. We could call it even there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I guess uh, you definitely gotta watch it. It became uh, like an overnight. I saw the first episode. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how you didn't finish it. All I, I did not finish <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. But it became uh, Netflix's most played series of all time. Really? Like of all time? Yeah. Like beat out Stranger Things, beat out all those. That is very interesting. Yeah, it was an overnight, yeah, it was uh, South Korea. Yeah. Overnight sensation. Um, you know, I think the, the maker of it has been doing things for a while down there in Korea. Yeah. So it's just, I think it's a passion project. It said it took him 12 years to get made. That's right. I heard about and that. And then, you know, time. one day for it to blow up around the world. So, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. He kept going for it. He got shut down from what I've read. Yeah. He got shut down by a lot of uh, networks. And finally, Netflix gave it a go, and it was like just yeah, an instant it, success. Yeah. I mean, I don't, it wasn't even like really word of mouth. It was just it was through it was it was actually it was memeable. It, yeah. I mean, that's how I heard about it. Instant, it's yeah, instantaneously, it was just speaking all kinds of meme material. Yeah, like, absolutely. What the hell is this? Uh, but for those who haven't seen it, I recommend watching it in its native Korean because when you do watch it with the native language, you get the actual. Subtleties of the actors and right. their mannerisms and stuff. You know, it's like watching. I don't know if you've seen Dark, uh, uh, the German show. And yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. not like that. You know, they do a good job dubbing it, but it's not like anime where you're, you're not getting. You know, I, I I don't always. Yeah, I'm I'm against dubbing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because of it's sometimes the people dubbing don't get the acting right <laughs> or the translation right either. Or the so, translation yeah. right because they're trying to fit in the phrasing with the timing and right. sometimes it just doesn't work out right so it's just better to read it yeah yeah, yeah. i think it's uh, for me it's a little bit better like easier for anime because you're not getting that physical acting you get right. more voice so it's a little bit you get a little more of a pass I, yeah i would say yeah and that's how i was raised in anime when i was younger is we always had the dubbing versions on like adult swim and stuff that's right so, but it uh, wasn't until but with, like actual it. like film and television it's it's really when you can see, it's like those old like uh, kung fu movies where they're like yeah, those are the, the mouth moves and then like that was bad. You know? <laughs> they didn't give a shit. That was just like low quality. Like they that. were just slapping yeah. audio together. It was just like all right, it works. <laughs> that's that's what he's saying. So yeah, so, I would recommend watching <laughs> it straight up in the uh, actual language. It's it's really yeah. You know, if you can read fast enough, which I think most people can. So there. So I'm getting the impression they're really gonna milk this 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 series. Right. Well, I don't know if they're. Little, it, I mean, it seems like it's it's something that can go on. Well, Netflix is kind of hurting for money at this point. Yeah. And my, I mean, not quite hurting, but they're definitely well, on the on the realm of. Well, they lost subscribers. On getting there, yeah, they lost subscribers. They increased their the amount to subscribe, and now they're going to talk about doing ads for lesser users. Mm. So you got to pay more. Also, they're doing... you already got to pay more for HD. Like Ultra HD in general. Yeah, I don't know how that's gonna work and, out. And the whole no sharing like password. I don't know that's I don't I don't think that's gonna work out. Yeah. Honestly. So I would say they're gonna try to hold on to what they can you know, with Stranger Things. Well, you know, it's been tough. They have a lot of competition. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, they were first in the game when it came to the uh, streaming wars. Yeah. And they were doing great with you know original content, but you know, it's hard to compete now. You know, they've well, got Amazon, yeah. which is. A pretty pretty tough competitor, HBO and uh, Disney Plus. 
Yeah, well, Ooh, Disney owns yeah. both of those, Disney Plus. Yeah, Plus. that's true. Yeah, so it's like double. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Dis- and Amazon, Disney. like almost everybody has it already because most people have Prime in general. Right, exactly. So they get that for free with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I just, think I saw a recent poll that said Netflix is the streaming service that has the least value for for streamers. So they see it as the that's least tough, valuable. man. You know, imagine, I feel bad for them because they really do have good shows. Yeah. And they were the first ones in the game, but you know, you, you just gotta stop canceling their good ones, you know. <laughs> that's true. So that's I hear true. that's a little comic and plain is you know, get one or two seasons and it's really built up and there's a cliffhanger, and then Netflix is like, Yeah, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's almost like they give them a nice well, you know, to be fair, they give them a nice te- test run yeah. for like you know, first season. You, you notice that, like, if you do a first season and it does well. Yeah. You know, halfway into like the first season, they're like, "Okay, your numbers are great, so let's, <laughs> let's sign you up for a second. Yeah, like Stranger Things, it's no brainer. You know, right? I think exactly. if Duffer Brothers didn't want to end it, they'd be like, "All right, let's get ten seasons." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm pretty sure they did the same thing with Squid Games. It was just like immediate. It was like, you know, well, yeah, when you become your biggest yeah. sensation, it's like, oh no, we're gonna, yeah, we have to do, <laughs> we have to do three or four more seasons. It's like a guy in the board meeting is like, I don't know, maybe we should just not do anymore. They just chuck him out. No. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Get out of your box. But, but who knows? Maybe they're very, very tough, and you got to have a certain number, uh, you know, of yeah. views for your first season. And if you don't make that, it's like, hey, man, sorry, you got cut. <laughs> <laughs> you washed right. up, kid. What else? What else you got for news? Uh, so last time we talked about some video game adaptations. Uh, okay. The yeah. one that just came out in the news is Duke Nukem. Yeah, you told me about this. I yeah. think it sounds ridiculous. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it, well, I mean, and the game is ridiculous. Kind of far from the course of the other game. It's uh, you much. know, so it's going to be from the creators of Cobra Kai, which is also a ridiculous uh, series. It is, but it works. It does. It's, it makes it's, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Yeah, it's yeah. it's cringy in a good way. Yeah, know? it is. It uh, is. Uh, I forget yeah. the actor's name who plays uh, Johnny Johnny Lawrence. Okay, yeah. Yes. His, his arguments okay, that he wasn't. William Zaka. Yeah, William Zaka. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Yes. He does a really good job. His arguments are like that he was the cry kid and Daniel LaRusso was the bad guy. Came in. Right. Sick. Yeah, <laughs> the way they flip it around is actually pretty, pretty clever. Yeah, yeah. And I like it. And it's, and you know, it's, it's for, you know, the generation that grew up watching the Karate Kid. And it was just like one of those things. It's kind of like, it's a cultural movie. It's a yeah. staple. You know, everyone, I, I I know this, anyone from my generation is doing the thing, you know, or, you know, the references with the chopstick of catching the fly. Yeah, yeah, you know? wax on, wax off. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's a big deal, man. Everyone, everyone knows about that. So, you know, it's, it was smart to kind of harp it on those nostalgia chords, yeah. you know, it, it works. It's shameless, <laughs> I gotta say, <laughs> but it, it definitely works. All right, so back to Duke Nukem. Yeah, so... so uh, you so, know, yeah. getting on the '80s nostalgia. I mean, Duke Nukem is a character that's based off an amalgamation of all these '80s action heroes. That's right. Kind of wrapped up in the one, and yeah. uh, you know, he saves Los Angeles from an alien invasion. So you already know it's going to be kind of a yeah, this over the top. I mean, it's kind of like Doom, Doom meets uh, you know Dolph Lundgren from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or uh, uh, Kurt Russell from Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, something it's, like it's that. All those guys wrapped like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, you know Kurt Russell. It's all wrapped in one. Yeah, character, and it's it's basically a meme smoking character. a cigar. You know, has these catchphrases <laughs> like "Oh, we'd love your neck" or "Hit off your head and shit down your neck." Or, yeah, all kinds of or weird I'm gonna, shit. I'm Great kick quiz. some ass and chew bubble gum, but I'm all in gum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Like it's just what he's, it's just these dumb cat phrases. So it's basically it's a, it's a parody of this era. Yeah. And with with this, it's like, is it gonna be like a parody of that parodic kind of? It's gonna be a parody. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess so. It, that's the only way it, it can't work. take itself too seriously. It can't. You know, it can't. The, the video this, game didn't yeah. take itself seriously. <laughs> it was it was like a guilty pleasure video game, kind of like what you said. It was kind of reliving that that yeah. life, you know, like, you know, like you were in that world of like being in an action, yeah. 80s action. Movie. I wonder if it's going to uh, kind of take on like a Kung Fury type of uh, vibe. Ooh, that would be interesting. That, yeah. That would be great. That, I love that. And it's, that that's, that's fantastic. Out, I think this year, maybe yeah. uh, the new Kung Fury. The, part two. Yeah. It, it took be, them about yeah. 10 years. Yeah, well, a little bit more of the that. crowdfunding and, and stuff. That's what the original one was made was the crowdfunding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Arnold Schwarzenegger is actually going to be in it. In the new one, yeah, no shit. Okay, so he that's, that's, that's probably why they were they were taking so long because it's a crowd fund. He's expensive. But if it's if it's anything like that, you know, that'd be like over the top, but 
not two of the top. Maybe yeah. I think that'd be cool. I mean, like, come on, uh, it's, it's come on. You're expect you're no. This is where I, I disagree. This is one of those situations where you have to be like you have license to do over the top crazy. That's shit. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. It needs to be like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because it's alien invasion in Los Angeles, and you're a guy who like basically in a Doom game, just running around shooting. Them. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, we're doing these one liner right. quips. All the time. If there's traditional like movie stuff in there, like a triangle or like a hero's journey type deal, it's like it's not gonna work too well. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all, man. This is just a popcorn, uh, uh, you know, popcorn. Thing. But you know, nothing really hardcore set. No release dates. Looking at yeah. no, um, no actors involved yet. So we'll, mm. you know, we'll see. this is just on the announcement yeah, phase. Basically, just uh, they said the creators of Cobra Kai are gonna do this. Yeah. Um, okay. And we'll see how it goes. All right. Yeah, this sounds like they're going to have fun with this. And then uh, last on my news is Vincent D'Onofrio, mm. uh, who is you know, just a world-class actor in my opinion. He's very good. And I yes, this, this goes way back to the Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, method. Uh, very method. Yeah, very method. Uh, he, <laughs> and, then, and then on the method aspect, he posted an Instagram post uh, with the caption of, Back to work, no fear, no greed, no envy. And he's just looking at the camera. With a little sly smile, and a lot of people are taking this as um, him getting back into the Wilson Fisk role. Interesting. Uh, from Daredevil, because he recently did this in Hawkeye on Disney Plus. Okay. So yeah. That was the first time they we did a crossover. I think Hawkeye came out before Spider Man, right? Yeah. In December. Yeah. So that was the first time that we saw a Netflix Marvel character. That's right. Come into the MCU. That's so, right. Yeah, uh, a lot of fans were like kind of hoping for that to happen because they thought his portrayal of Wilson Fisk was anchored in comics. Right. And, uh, yeah. And, I mean, he he took it and made it his own. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, the, the the comic book, he's 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 it's a different character. Right. Um, you know, he's he's definitely a full blown mobster in the in the comic book. <laughs> but um, you know, D'Onofrio kind of he added some nuances to it where he was this tragic. Yeah, he's this tragic character, and you understood why he is the way he is. Yeah, and, you know, so you kind of empathize with him a little bit. He, he added some depth to the yeah, character. Yeah, I always so like saw him as kind of like his character, his version of it, as kind of someone who was maybe a bit sheltered growing up, mm -hmm. and then got into this powerful role because mm -hmm. he has kind of like this social awkwardness. But, yeah, he you know, at the same time, he has this, yeah. like this emotional depth, the nuance to him. Yeah, where yeah. He, you know, he, maybe he he's that like narcissistic mentality where he doesn't think what he's doing is a bad thing and no. he's, well, he's, 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 he's the hero in his own story and right <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the little that's the little thing the whole, that's not uh, working right uh, uh, who's his love like Vanessa Vanessa yeah that's right I don't know if they're gonna bring all these characters back and I don't even know if they're part of that traditional universe or if they're just bringing back these these actors and characters I, I like the fact that he's I hope that he becomes one of these villains you know slash characters that uh can they can pop in into a bunch of other different, uh, right? You know, stories and properties. Because he's he's kind of mainly a Spider-Man villain too, isn't he? No, man. No, he's, he's, more just all he's, he's just a big villain. No, oh, okay. no. He's a, he's actually he's a Spider-Man villain. He's a Daredevil villain. He's a he's a Punisher villain. Yeah. So he's clashed with a, a bunch of other heroes. Right. Yeah. So I think that's great if they pop him into the Punisher. Yeah, I mean, they just threw him in there with the Hawkeye stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, you know. yeah. And they had a little didn't they have a crossover? Um, with Punisher and Daredevil, they did. Well, the whole yeah. um, Netflix series they did; those all tied together. Eventually, they became the Defenders. Right. Yeah. So all those little series turned into one. So obviously, they're in the all. They're they're yeah. all in the same world because the, all right, the Punisher is an MCU because Spider Man is in, like the Daredevil and Spider Man. They did that connection. Yeah, yeah. So they're in the same world. So yeah, you know. Uh, so you're you're saying that these are actually the same characters from the. the Netflix. Yeah, I would say so too. I, I, yeah, wasn't, absolutely. I wasn't sure if they were like. I mean, they made they obviously made the Daredevil connection yeah. in Spider Man uh, no, way home, no Way Home. Yeah, right. Where so he catches the brick. That was that was <laughs> fantastic, man. I was like, yeah, that's great. I'm a good lawyer. Yeah, that, 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 that was that was great, man. Um, I love that cameo. Yeah. So yeah, so they made that connection. So I'm guessing just by proxy that all the other connections. Yeah, it'd, be, it'd be great to have all those guys come back. You know, uh, John Bernthal. As Punisher, yeah, I, mean, I think he really nailed that. Uh, yeah, he role. nailed that character. So, and, uh, he is the Punisher. He's the best Punisher I've seen. The second season of Iron Fist, I think, it was a lot better than the first one. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah. The first one was not very loved by people, and the second one kind of came around. Yeah, it was, it was a little he better. Got, he got even better in the Defenders, so the potential with that character, and then, um, he's, know, he's better Jessica when Jones, he's with other people. Yeah. Jessica, Jessica Jones was a good series. That was a great, that was a hit. Yeah. That was a big so hit. They had all this potential, now it's, they're, they, like, Disney owns it. So they, that's why they're all on Disney Plus now. Yeah, let's see so. what happens. Um, it's been in limbo for the past what four years? Now? Yeah, wow. Yeah. yeah, and I thought uh, so when Disney Plus came out, it was like, oh, we're not gonna have anything rated R or, or stuff. And then now it's like, well, we're gonna put all this all this stuff on. Hey, it now, so. you know they got they got to cater. Punisher to... is definitely not a, a kids show. It is not. <laughs> it is not a kids show. They have to cater to the. I mean, listen. But they have to dumb it down a little bit. They have all these characters, mm -hmm. right? Right. They have all these characters, and these characters are based on, you know, their their property, their comics. Yeah. So they, you know, and all of these series, all of these shows were successful, with the exception of Iron Fist. <laughs> all the other ones, which wasn't sold on me, I really didn't like that series. Right. They could have done a lot. Better. <laughs> I mean, how many times did you tell? Everybody, that you're the Iron Fist from Kung Lai or whatever. I, just, I mean, that was one of the things that bothered me. But it's just, it was just the writing, everything. I just wasn't along for the journey. Yeah. It, it didn't sell it. Uh, yeah, so uh, I was okay. saying it's like, uh, but you know, with the whole already stuff, it's like, are they gonna are they gonna up the ante there and they're gonna increase the violence? Are they gonna dumb it down so they can fit to that PG thirteen? This one has to be honest, and yeah, they do have to cater for the PG thirteen and some of the teenagers. Yeah. I mean, they watch this stuff anyway. Well, they yeah. get it. But they also have to cater to the adults. The adults yeah, appreciate this. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. Like the majority. I mean, you know, I can say it's it's it's. You know, they're not just catering to kids anymore. And I know Disney wants to hold on to that, but yeah. you know, the adults are kind of, you know, uh, adding to the Marvel revenue. Let's not let's not care. Yeah, the adults are the ones that are paying for their kids to watch these things. Yeah, and, the man, adults, and, they're, and they're fans as well. And yeah, the adults grew up with. Disney, you know, there's a whole Disney adult aspect. Especially when it comes to the Star Wars stuff. Like, I mean, come on. Well, it's also like uh, with Daredevil. Like, what are they going to do? Not Daredevil, um, Deadpool. Like, what are they going to do with his stuff? Are they going to make, because that's the Merc of the Mouth is a very violent character. He is. You know. He is. And he is true to the comic <laughs> character. So, you know, they can't make him, you know, PG like that. You know, they have to, they have to, you know, don't upset the fan base. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> okay, so what do you got? All right, so let's see. So for news, I've got Prey, which is a, uh, I guess it's a prequel to Predator. Yeah, really. um, Yeah, so that seems interesting. So they're going back about 300 years, and this is supposed to be the first time the Predators uh, came to, to Earth. Okay. Right? And and the story surrounds um, a, you know, Comanche, uh, you know, young woman warrior. Um, and I think the story actually sounds pretty good. I like the, the name of it, you know, it's like Predator and Prey, right, so. Yeah, all right, so we've got Dan Trachenberg. It's a Hulu, Hulu show, okay, or a movie, Hulu movie. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's coming out this year. Yeah, it is. Interesting. All right, so he's done 10 Cloverfield Lane, which is actually a pretty decent movie. I like that movie a lot. That wasn't bad. Yeah. But all right, so the director for Prey is uh, Dan Trachenberg. Um, so he's done a couple of movies, he's got a couple of things under his belt. Um, yeah, not too much on his IMDb here. Um, uh, let's see. But if they did, you know, Ten Cloverfield Lane, I think that's a good sign because that's, I think that's the my favorite of that series there. Yeah. With the Cloverfield mythos and stuff. Um, you know, obviously Cloverfield started it all off, but that, that, you know, branched off with that under bunker and with John Goodman. I thought that was really well done. That was good. Yeah. That was good. That was another twist. I mean, what, they made three Cloverfield movies now, right? They uh, did I think it's four now. They, they did four. I remember that the, the, there was the one in the bunker, then the one in outer space. I think the which was, well, they, they, what they did is the, the um, that demon movie that came out on Netflix where it was. Like, uh, it's a movie that was supposed to come out. They changed the uh, the direction of it, where it was supposed to like tie into it. And I think JJ was just like, you know, let's not do that. Let's oh, what? I think I never. I, I didn't hear about uh, this. I never knew about this. Uh, Overlord, I think is what it's called. Overlord tied into Cloverfield. Yeah, the demon movie. I think that's what it was called. Overlord. I remember it being a zombie movie or something like that. What? I didn't see that movie anyway. Maybe I'm getting it wrong, but I'll I'll think about it if I come back to it and I remember it all. That's I'll strange. It. But in any yeah. case, um, yeah. So. Uh, this guy has a couple of things under his belt, um, but yeah, he's doing. He's doing. <laughs> <laughs> it is hot. But uh, 
Yeah, it seems like he's doing prey. Um, and I'm a big fan of the Predator movies. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, I great. like I yeah. liked all of them. Man. I liked all you know Alien and stuff too. Uh, you know, I watched all those movies recently. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. The Alien and Predator ones, those were fun. They're you know fun action movies. I don't expect too much from them. You know, those are the movies that you know you get what you expect out of it. You know, nothing. <laughs> You know, when you're when you just want to watch like a nice action film and it's sci-fi yeah. and you know has some characters that are interesting, like and that's what that's my type of horror. I'm a big like uh, supernatural horror guy. Yeah. And, uh, the, uh, yeah. Psychological horror and sci-fi horror. Yeah. That's pretty good. Well, supernatural sci-fi is kind of like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. probably the same thing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, but yeah, it's an interesting concept. I thought it caught my attention when I first saw the trailer, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. So you have like you know like Comanche warriors against you know. Predators, yeah. So you know, you have like these two types of you know good hunters here. These uh, experts in their field, or you know. right, right. But does does the predator have this? I mean, obviously they're tech, they're so advanced. Like three hundred years to them isn't as much as it would be for humans. Right. No. So do they have the whole? They do still have. They like do still have the cloaking yeah. thing and the little laser thing. Yeah. That, you know, the little they, shoulder they, cannon they, and they, stuff. They, it's, they don't, you know, it sounds that sounds cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it sounds interesting. So yeah, so that's coming out um let's see and oh we were going to talk about bullet train and i made a note of this so right yeah uh but that looks like a nice little ensemble movie where you know everyone's kind of stuck on the train and there's a macguffin that brad pitt has it's the briefcase right <laughs> everybody yeah it's like, <laughs> like pulp fiction all over again uh so that's the macguffin and everybody's trying to get this this thing whatever how important it is yeah the way i got from the trailer is that brad pitt's character is kind of like this aloof out of retirement, kind of the assassin guy who doesn't yeah. really want to be there. Right. <laughs> he's yeah. just like, all right, a bit of a drag for him. Uh, I'm going to do this job, and I don't want to kill anybody. And then he's just like, yeah. <laughs> but he's well, going to have to. But too bad, because, uh, yeah, you know, um, yeah, the, who's the guy from Atlanta that's in this? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, Paperboy. Yeah, paper boy. Paperboy. <laughs> Paperboy's in this. Yeah. Brian. Yeah, Tyree Henry. Yeah, there we go. So he plays Lemon. Well, you know, it, it looks just from the trailer. He looked like it was like a funny character too. And, and I, the way I get it is, I, I'm sure like they're gonna start off as this enemy type thing, mm -hmm. but they're gonna come together and realize who the true villain right. is. And okay, and they're gonna like, combine. I mean, come on, they're not gonna. <laughs> you think so? I think so. You're not gonna kill them off. In the middle of the trailer, we get these. We get the actual bad guys, you know, coming in. Yeah. And I think it's gonna be one yeah. of those things where you know, possible. Where they team up at the end. Possible. You know, All right, let's see. Put your money where your mouth is. Go ahead. <laughs> let's see. Let's see how it turns out. I don't think you're gonna kill him off right away. Yeah, we'll see. But. He's that. He's he's a good actor. I've seen him in some other stuff. It was his. Uh, it was the last movie that I seen him in. Um, I mean, he was in Eternals. He did a great job. There. Yes, he was. He did a really good job. Yeah, there. man. The, the guy's been in a couple of things. Uh, what was it Hotel Artemis with? Uh, yeah. That was, that was actually good. I think that was his first major movie outside of um, Atlanta. Okay. And, and it was one of those movies where it was uh, Jodie Foster was in that film. No. And um, uh, the Foster sound. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was it was actually a pretty decent movie where it was just like you know they were stuck in this hotel and uh, you know Jeff Goldblum was in a movie and oh. he played a mobster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He played his creepy son. He played a very good version <laughs> of a gangster Jeff Goldblum, like the same guy, just very, very creepy. Um, but no, he did a good job. So yeah, um, yeah, Brian Tyree Henry, he's, he's, he's doing great. I'm a fan of his, man. But yeah, this is like a nice little ensemble cast. I think it's based on the Japanese one. novel. Oh, yeah? Uh, it's Korean or Japanese, but I, remember, I was reading about this and it's a story that already existed. Oh. And it's been adapted into a, um, an Americanized. Yeah. Yeah, Americanized film. Yeah. Okay. No, it sounds it, it sounds super. Oh, yeah, Sandra Bullock in here too. Sandra Bullock, yeah. I, 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 dude. I mean, this is a roster here. Aaron Taylor. Tom, Aaron Taylor Johnson, who uh, played uh, Quicksilver, of course, in MCU. Yeah. Um, yeah, Michael Shannon's in there. Michael Shannon, Sandra Bullock, um, Bad Bunny. Um, let's see here. Oh, this guy, he's always playing a samurai. Um, score yeah, he, uh, he was also uh, in Hawkeye. He played the little samurai that he. Oh, that's uh, right. No, Endgame when he killed the, uh, you know, he's he, uh, Ronan Duck. They're killing the uh, Japanese gangsters or whatever. And 
that's the guy that yeah. kills the enemy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He's always playing some, you know, uh, gangster, Yakuza. Yeah, very typecast. Yeah, <laughs> very typecast. But no one else is going to do it. Kind of like a Danny Trejo he's type good. deal. Yeah. He's, he's good. I, I don't have any complaints. You know, yeah. the guy's a great You're good at it. You're good at it. Yeah, he did Scorpion and uh, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, that's right. That yeah. was great. Yeah. So, yeah, his name is Hiro, Hiro Yuki Sonata as the Elder. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't fail that. Um, but no, it, it looks like a very fun, uh, very colorful uh, type of movie. A lot of action. A lot I of like the, uh, the locations tied to basically at one. Just I love those kind of locations. Yeah. I, I like when they do movies like that. And uh, Hotel Artemis is like Snowpiercer like or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, where they do it in one place. Like, there's no escape. Like, yeah. you're stuck there. There's no running off somewhere else. You, you know, you're not going to hit the road. Well, it has to like, take it's, place over nice. like, a short time. Bullet train, right? So it's, right. It, you know, you're going to get there. It's a pretty good time, too. Right. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. But no, it looks, right. it looks super, super fun. Um, yeah, man, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Let's see, uh, it's supposed to be coming out pretty soon. Uh, does it have a release date here? No. It, it's never coming out. Oh, no, <laughs> actually, August 5th. Okay. August 5th. So, you know, uh, interesting that they were showing trailers for this, like, a month and a half ago. Yeah. Like, uh, they do. Yeah. They do. They do that, man, just to kind of, you know, warm up the crowd, you know? I noticed that the trailers come out later happen. and later these days, though. It's like, you know... I think Thor Love and Thunder, the trailer for that came out like just a month and a half before it's going to release. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's really all you need. I mean, you don't need to do it. See, there's a problem that you have to hit a sweet point. Like a month, I think, a month before release, I think it's pretty good. You get a couple but, teasers and then the actual trailer comes right, out. Right, right. Depending on how much, you know, like uh, there, th there's expectations. Well, like with Kenobi, they didn't release it until like. That, and see, and that's the extreme problem. When you wait too long, yeah. like when you throw out these teasers and then you wait too long, people just stop caring. So you gotta hit, you gotta hit this uh, sweet spot. All right, all right. So Next cool. Next on the uh, agenda here. So let's move on to reviews. Okay. All right. So movie and TV talk here. Um, so you've seen a couple of movies. I've seen mostly uh, series and a movie. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, go ahead. Man. Okay, uh, so I want to start off with this series uh, by the creators of The Wire called mm -hmm. We Own This City. Okay. Uh, for those who've seen it, those you know know what I'm talking about. It's a it's a mini series. It's a one and done deal. Uh, six episodes. You know, you got your hour long episodes each. Okay. So um, it's really well done. You know, it's one of those series. It's like a true story, and it, it like it was so good that I ended up being like pissed off at the end of it because of how true it was and how like. Yeah. Just angry at the system I was. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's about the corruption of the uh, Baltimore Police Department, which, you know, I think for those who followed that scenario, it's kind of no surprise. And it takes place over, you know, about 10 years period. Most of it takes place between 2014 and 17, but it does a few some flashbacks. And it's got like a very uh, out of chronological order of telling. So, mm -hmm. you know, they'll go from 08 to 2014. 2017 and back. Oh, wow. Okay. It tells different uh, perspectives of characters, okay. but it all wraps it together. So you get, mm -hmm. you know, little puzzle pieces here and there, and then you introduce okay. more characters and you get more puzzle pieces. But it's a true story. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about the Gun Trace Task Force uh, in Baltimore, you know, the police department there, which were basically like quasi undercover cops who run in plain clothes, uh, look for basically guns. Right. And, okay. you know, pull over anybody for any reason, you know. Out yeah. there and just beat the shit out of them and steal their money. Yeah, it sounds like uh, So John <laughs> John Bergthal plays the Tiller character. Uh, Tiller, that's not even the right word. Uh, I think. Let's see. While I'm looking this up, and he plays mm -hmm. the character that is the head of the Gun Trace Task Force out okay. there. Actually, you want to look it up for me while I'm doing this? Yeah. Yeah. So he plays the the main. Head honcho in that that task force, and basically he's the corrupted, the corrupted cop right. who corrupts everybody else. Oh, so he's that guy. Yeah, he's oh, like you man, know, he right. sees some money. He's like, hey, no one's gonna know, you know. Ah, oh, um, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, and he's he has so much abuse allegations against him that they just. So he's just a uh, just, just a nasty old guy. crooked cop. Wow, yeah. okay. but he's so narcissistic. He thinks he's a great cop. That he thinks he's doing such a good job of. Getting these guns and these drugs and all this stuff off the streets. Okay. But you know, why not take a few few thousand dollars here and there? You know, right. You work so hard. Or, or you know, <laughs> do unwarranted checks and you know, 
rough up people's houses and you know no shit yeah and wow. they have uh, you know characters that are you know, the actual people that are tied to gangs and stuff out there that you know they're the insiders yeah that you know, infiltrate the gangs and stuff and so so this entire series is is it based on a true story it's 100 percent true 100 i would say it's like 99 percent true with maybe a little bit of a creative are they playing way. real characters yeah they're yeah. all real characters Every single one of them is either dead now, in prison for decades, okay. or lost their jobs. No shit. Yeah. This is interesting. Yeah. I like stories like this. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 kind of um, you know it's it's a little bit of journalism and art, uh, you know, retelling put together. Uh, but you know, I'd like you know without stories like this, you wouldn't know these things happen. Right. Yeah. Unless, I mean? unless you're like you know you know someone who followed that type of stuff. Right, right. And even if it was a new story, I mean, new stories have a very short yeah. lifespan. So, so it's, it's uh, in and out. Another <laughs> thing I was going to say is it starts right around the time in terms of like the, when the series starts, around when uh, Freddie Gray was killed in Baltimore. Oh, no so shit. With all the riots and happening out there, how yeah. nobody trusts the cops and all this. And, you know, they're like, well, why doesn't anybody trust us? We're the good guys. And, you know, no shit. Do they, do they show yeah, that? Yeah, they, they, they do show the riots happening and it goes, you know, back and forth and they talk about it. And, uh, they talk about how there's all this heat on them and they have yeah. to be careful and all this. No kidding. Yeah. So that's part of the story. That is very interesting. I have yeah. to check it out. It's it's very uh wow. like I said, it's made me like angry at the end because I'm like, God damn, like what Yeah, this is actually this it is makes actually you think happen. about like everything else. But too, this is uh, this is an ugly truth, and that's why I like yeah. these kind of stories, because if if not for these filmmakers that actually went in and did some digging yeah. and and you know you know, pushed ahead. I'm pretty sure it wasn't easy to make this right. show. But pushed ahead and made it, man. Same I think guys that's actually the Wire. You know, same same exact creators of the Wire. Right. Uh, the Wire is not necessarily a true story, but it's based off of like a conglomeration of stories. It is. Yeah. And, and yeah. They did so their research, it's, man. It's pretty. You know, all that's kind of true in its own way. And then you have this series, which is very true. Yeah. And you know, obviously, there's a mission you, there with you, them. I mean, they're, you they're, wrote, they're, Yeah, they're, yeah. I think I think that's great, man. You yeah. need this type of storytelling. Where well, that's what art does. It holds up a mirror to. It does. Society, Absolutely. You know? It's supposed to. It's supposed to hold up a mirror and see how ugly things are. I would are. say uh, not just a mirror, but a magnifying glass. That too. Know? Like that makes, too. Like, you can focus on <laughs> very, very specific things. So, yeah. you know, um, I would definitely see here. Awesome. Uh, I wanted to definitely praise John Bernthal in his role. You know, he's got such a, a wide range, I believe. He can play these characters that have such nuance in their emotions. He's and, intense. Yeah, he's yeah, intense, but he can also be soft sometimes, too, yeah, where yeah. he brings it down, but then he yeah. hits you back with his craziness. And I think this, this yeah. character is, you know, he's got the wide eyes and like the. Bugging out, like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you don't know which way he's gonna go, yeah. kind of thing. Oh, that's interesting. So shout out to him, and you know, hopefully he gets some, some good uh, stuff. Yeah, he looks out. crazy. He yeah. looks crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's wild. All right, I yeah, gotta so check it out. HBO, you know, check that out. I would definitely recommend it. It's on my uh, list. It's a six, just a six episode series. Uh, yeah. It made me actually go back and watch The Wire because I had never seen it before. That's right. Yeah, yeah you told me about. So that. I'm in the middle of that and. Have some what do you think um, about the wire so far? It's good. What season are you? At? I'm in uh, towards the tail end of season two. Okay. All right. So. Uh, oh, okay. You're yeah. The season two is a little bit. I've heard that it's it, like three and four where it gets it, really. It good. does. It, it dips down. Season two dips down. Yeah. Like it's not even. Season one was great. See, it was great, and, and then, then season two dips. They say three and four goes back. Down. It goes back up. I don't know what they were trying to do <laughs> in season two. They're trying to show another side. Yeah. Uh, okay, I respect the story, but yeah, it, it gets so much better. But at least for the first season, I was I was very impressed. I was totally yeah. totally taken in. I was all like engaged on these guys. Yeah, and, man. And it gives you uh, a different perspective of someone who like obviously like never grew up in that that type of shit. Yeah. Like I've seen my fair share of, of you know bad behavior and like you know it's a bad world. upbringings and stuff. And, yeah, this is but a it's, you know world. it's there's when they say there's not really a choice in these you know there's, it's all part of the game. Yeah, because that's the life they grew up in. Yeah, man. And you know, when you're systematically oppressed, you don't really have much choice in what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, that is what it is. Not only man. do you have no choice against the system, but then you have to work against the system of the people who are in control of you that you're working for. Yeah, you man. It's know? all a system, and it's <laughs> hard to escape that shit. Yeah. Because it's like, what road are you going to take? And man? these characters are sure. deciding to make the right choices and getting killed. Yeah, <laughs> because pretty it's, much. Uh, yeah, so yeah, you're going to have to be a bad guy. You're going to have to go yeah. into survival mode. It's, man. You know, do what you need to do. You know, killer despite, killed, despite you know, morality, yeah, it's like it's like it's it is a jungle. It's yeah. like the animal kingdom. 
than that. It's it's it does a great job of portraying that. One of the best series ever. Yeah. So when I finish that, you know, we'll you know, talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. <laughs> for sure. All right. What else? What do you got? Okay. So let's see here. Okay. So the boys. The boys has been great, man. I've been having <laughs> so much fucking fun watching this series, man, because it just I, the anticipation of you don't know where they're going to go. Right. Like it's that crazy. Okay. So every episode I go in like I know they're gonna do some shit. They're gonna up the ante. It's gonna be some crazy shit that's gonna happen next. Yeah, yeah. Um I, I I'm pretty sure there's a ton of other uh you know uh, uh you know boys fans um that that understand this. Like every episode you're just you just you know anticipating like what crazy shit am I gonna see now? And it didn't disappoint. <laughs> so uh, this last episode called Hero Gasm um, <laughs> is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it's a hero orgy, and uh, all the characters and everything culminates into this this point uh, because they're looking for certain individuals. Yeah. Uh, you gotta watch this thing, man. They're looking for certain individuals that are at this at the superhero orgy. <laughs> <laughs> it's an actual orgy of superheroes. It's, listen, man. That's, this that, is what can't, that can't be um, this, clean because this, this with all not, these super strength motherfuckers out there. It's not clean. Uh, it's very inventive. Uh, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. You throw us a little bit too much and you're going to destroy someone's uh, spinal cord. Listen, uh, <laughs> let me just say this, man. There's this guy that has a Mr. Fantastic type of situation. Oh, happening. my God. All right. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Yeah. This is that marble. I see where you're going with this, that. Yeah, yeah. This is, and they show this, man. There's no, there's, there's no full, blurry, full frontal. Huh? There's no full blurring frontal. anything out. So, uh, but no, let's get high here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man. Uh, I think I might do like a, you know, hop in on those reaction videos and do a voice watch. You should. You yeah. should. I would love to see your reaction. <laughs> you should absolutely should. I would pay money to see that. Man. No, it's good. Um, all right, so getting back to the episode was great because uh, everything culminates into this uh, 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 situation, this party that's going on. And, uh, you know, we have two different teams. We have Butcher, um, who's, the main, who's the main guy, played by, uh, played by uh, Carl Urban. Okay. Uh, he does a great job of playing Love the Carl character. Urban. Yeah, he does a great, great job of playing the character. So there's this asshole called uh, Homelander. Right? right, he's like the, the Trump superhero, as they say. Somewhat, yeah. right? Kind of, yeah. They they've given him read. Trump qualities, which is very, very accurate to the actual character yeah. from the comic book. Um, but he's essentially, if Trump was Superman, right, yeah. right, <laughs> which would be a disaster. <laughs> it would be a disaster. So that's who Homelander is. Gotcha. Yeah. So there's this guy with no limits, yeah. super huge ego. Can do anything he wants because who's gonna who's gonna fuck with Superman? <laughs> and nobody, him. no one's gonna stop him. He can do whatever he wants. So that's who Homelander is. Okay. But he's a complete ass, man. Like he yeah. manipulates people. You know, he it's 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 all bad. Um. So you know, the whole point of you know Butcher and Home like Butcher's trying to take down Homelander for various reasons. Okay. Uh, various various personal personal reasons. So you're not like a good guy per se. He's just kind of like against him. Butcher is not a good guy. Absolutely not. He is a anti-hero. Okay. I don't think there was any good guys. <laughs> I'm just trying to think here. All right, there's maybe one good guy, which is the 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 girl uh, uh, Starlight, um, and she plays love interest of uh, Huey, who um, is like the second in command or the person that uh, Butcher takes under his wing. Okay, great. Right? So Huey is kind of like this very kind of novice. Um, you know, tail between your legs kind of guy, you know, he's not very violent or anything like that. He's the opposite of Butcher, but, you know, Butcher's kind of using him for certain things. Is he the guy, so I've seen, like, the first episode. Is he the guy that is dating the girl that gets run over? Right, that's, yeah. that's you. <laughs> okay. Right, so that's him. So he's new to the game. But he's, he has powers. No, he does. Oh, he does? No, okay. he does. No, they're all human. Any, anyone that's in the boys is all human. So they hate suits. So only the Homelander has powers? Homelander and a, and a bunch of other superheroes. So there's a ton of other superheroes. Okay. But the whole idea of the boys is that they are human beings that are like, you know, we keep you guys in check. We keep right. the superheroes in check. So we'll find out your weaknesses. Okay. We'll blackmail you. We'll do whatever it is. But don't think because you're a superhero you're going to get away with doing whatever it is you want. 
So Butcher is a genius at this. Butcher is a genius at finding out what their weaknesses are, what it is that's kind of that that he can squeeze to bend these superheroes, like you know, have them bend their knees essentially. Okay. And he's he's great at that. So, um, but he's like a politician in a sense, where you can get under people's. Yeah. He's more of a mobster, I would say. Okay, but well, I guess that's kind of like a politician. It's, it's it's very underhand. He does very underhanded stuff. Like for instance, like uh, he knows that all the superheroes, uh, you know, do drugs, right? Okay. So I mean, the superheroes are kind of like celebrities. Like yeah. think of them like big Hollywood celebrities. They just have superpowers. That's how they treat them. So he kind of finds these little ways of manipulating them. So he finds like he finds one superhero's uh, drug dealer, right? And he finds a way to like uh, blackmail the drug dealer and then tells the drug dealer to add a little extra crazy substance to this, to, to you know, to the hero. And then the hero takes it, takes the, the drugs or whatever. And then it's like, you know, his heart blows up or some shit. Like he, like he finds little ways, like he's a little okay. genius about that. So he finds ways to like, he's going to fuck with you somehow. If he wants to get, if he wants to get you, he's going to find a way to get you. Kind of like a joker. Yes. Yes, he is. All right. Absolutely. He has that kind of brain. Um, but, uh, yeah, in this episode, um, yeah, so in this episode, it's great because it all culminates down to this one thing, and hold on a second. So, so yeah, this episode is where, um, so the whole point is that Butcher uh, wants to get to Homelander. He wants to kill him. Okay. He wants to take this guy out of commission. I mean, they, they have, they've been bumping heads. Uh, Homelander can kill him at any point. Any time because yeah. Butcher is just only human. Okay. However, um, it's it, in this episode has gotten to the point where, um, and this is something that's found out. Uh, I'm giving out spoilers here, but uh, Butcher finds a way to get powers. Okay. All right. So you know it, it's gotten to the point where you know Homelander is like you know if if you're coming at me, I'm going to come at you. Right. And you know sooner or later it's just going to be us two, and you know who's going to win. So Butcher takes that as all right. Challenge accepted, <laughs> and he finds a way to get uh, superpowers, and man, um, he kind of holds his own. And not only that, but we have Jensen Ackles here uh, from um, Supernatural, um, and he plays a uh, soldier boy. Now, there's probably a ton of Supernatural fans out there. He, um, I like the guy. He's a great, great actor, um, and he does great at playing soldier boy. So soldier boy is essentially a Captain America type character. Okay, um, but all of these all of these superheroes are flawed, man. So he's a very old school type of. <laughs> he has an old school type of mindset where you know he's like super machismo and like you know he's he's coming from like the fifties of men should be Talk, men, toxic male, right? That <laughs> kind of thing. So he's not exactly a perfect character. However, he joins forces with Butcher yeah. uh, because he sees Homelander as like some. Uh, you know, poor copy of him. Right. So, so Soldier Boy is essentially Captain America mixed with Winter Soldier. Okay. And uh, it was a situation where Soldier Boy was kidnapped by the Russians uh, like 50 years ago or something. And, uh, you know, he gets frozen and he did a bunch of experiments on him and they brainwashed him and all this stuff. Kind okay. of like the so, Maturian yeah. candidate yeah. kind of thing. So, very similar. So, when he hears like a specific type of music, yeah, he starts to get create flashbacks. Yeah, definitely a Winter Soldier. Right, there. right, exactly. So they have that kind of thing going on there. Uh, but uh, he's just as powerful as Homelander. Okay. So they find they you know part of the whole season is that they're trying to find you know where they hit Soldier Boy, where they have him frozen. So uh, he's really the only thing a person that can take down uh, Homelander. Okay, only one powerful enough. Basically. Only one powerful enough, right? So and that's what they do, and it, it, in the showdown. Is that hero gasm? <laughs> where there, where this is crazy orgy happening? <laughs> but then there's a lot of death and blood, bodies and all that <laughs> stuff. It's just crazy how it all goes down. Um, it's it's so far it's the best episode that I've seen uh, of the boys and the fight um, that they had between Butcher, Soldier Boy, and Homelander, and even Huey jumps into the fight oh, wow. as well. Um, yeah, that that was very, very, very satisfying, and it's it was great. I'll, like, I'll start 
doing this when I, you know, eat you get eat. past these series and watch, and I'll put on you, boys and start doing a dude, reaction series. Dude, please, please. <laughs> like I said, I would pay to see those reactions, man, because there's a lot of shock value in this. Yeah, yeah. That's this kind of why I've been avoiding it. It's like, you know, part of me is just like, uh, gore. <laughs> there's a lot of it, man. There's a lot. I mean, they don't. It's not just gorgeous for the show, but there's, of course, there's a decent story behind it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but the shock value of it. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't know where it's coming from, and then you're like, holy shit, did they just do that? <laughs> that that's what you're going to say most of the time. Like, did they just do that shit? Clearly more, more than that for me. I'd be like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, man. It'll yeah. It'll be worth it. Worth it man. Yeah. Um, one thing I'm going to throw in there is that now they have a uh, spinoff, which is called The Boys Diabolical. So it's an animated series. Right? It is an animated series. So what they did was this is kind of a, a, like an anthology. So what they've gotten is, is that they've gotten other filmmakers, mm -hmm. right, and other celebrities mm -hmm. to just take the boys' story and create their own short stories out of it. Okay. You know, so you have people that did, uh, you know, like the Rick and Morty people. Okay. You know, they have an episode. Game Herman. Yeah, that. like they have an episode, like the same type of animation and all that stuff. Oh wow! So okay. they have, That's cool. yeah, yeah, the same type of comedy. But their story takes place in that world, and okay. it's fucking it's fucking hilarious, man. Nice. You know, you can you can recognize some of the voices and all that. Um, also, Aquafina has her own episode. Okay. Um, Aquafina, she was in um, Shang uh, Shang Chi. Um, great, great movie as well. She played a great role. Um, but uh, yeah, she did her own short in there. That's fucking hilarious. So you have all these filmmakers that do their own shorts, different types of animations. Um, yeah, I, it, it's, it's good. It expands on the story. Some of them are actual panels and little, uh, kind of plots from the actual comic book, mm -hmm. which the series kind of diverged from completely. Okay. So they're not following the, the comic books. Anymore. Oh, really? They broke off. Yeah, they broke off and, and they're doing their own thing, which I think is appreciated. This is a, uh, Seth Rogen's a producer on this, right? Seth Rogen, this is his, this is his brainchild. Yeah. Yeah, which is great because the comic the, the comic book came out back in the nineties. Okay. Uh, what's I say no, scratch that. I think it's the early two thousands that it came out, um, and I remember when it came out too. Um, and uh, it's the same guy that wrote um, uh, Preacher, which was a great great comic book series, um, where he just subverts everything. Yeah. You know, he, and Preacher he subverted religion and, okay. and the idea of religion. And he just expanded on it. He went to so many different ways with that. And he's doing the same thing with the boys. The boys, he just took he just took this idea of superheroes in the real world, and he just ran with it and just expanded on it. And he was like, well, if they were real superheroes, they'd have massive egos. And they'd, some of them would yeah, be well, assholes. They're, well, if they were actually human beings. They were actually human yeah. beings. They're, a lot of them would be assholes. Yeah, not these... Uh... Crusader type, people. no, they're yeah, not all of them are gonna be good. So, he made them very, very yeah. practical. Um, yeah, and it's, it's so so dark 2006 to 2012 is when it was, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mid 2000s, yeah. um, yeah, man. So, you know, they the series diverged from the actual comic books, okay. Um, they did, had the did same very, or did it like uh, go beyond it? It, I say diverged because they're taking certain elements. From the comic book, but they're doing it in their own way. Gotcha. You know, like they're not reinventing the wheel. They're just, it's just a different storyline. Are the creators involved in this? Um, in some way. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, Garth Enos is the uh, writer creator. Like a creative consultant type deal? I would say so, just to kind of keep the characters like how true. George Lucas is a consultant on these right. things. Right. Right. Just keeping yeah. the characters true, like Butcher and Huey. But they can, and all he can do this, but they can't do that. Right. Yeah, right, that kind that of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're totally like cool with them just taking off on their own. Yeah, yeah, because the, the storyline of where it's going is completely, it's completely yeah. different. Like there are some things that were introduced in the comic that you know took a long time for them to introduce here. So it's it's just different. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in any case, you need to watch it. Uh, <laughs> you also need to watch Diabolical too, man. I, I yeah. just saw all of all of that. Um, great, great I'll stuff. Put it on my list. So yeah. my next one is Lightyear. Okay, yeah, you did see uh, that. I right. watched it, had no real expectation that I knew what it was about, didn't really care, it, you know, had no, like, oh, it better be about this, right. it's, but it's a lightyear movie, you know? Low expectations. Still go in there, and, okay. like, I didn't care that Chris Evans was the voice, you know? Right. Like, well, 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 let's get, 
Do you want to talk about the Tim Allen thing? Well, we can talk about it, but I think people... Because there was, there was something, we were going back and forth. Uh, well, so so I, uh, I figured out what happened, and basically is the gist that I got is that Tim Allen just too busy. He That's got, what it came down to. Yeah, uh, a lot of people think that he got canned because of his conservativeness. Or right. Whatever, That's but what was out if that was the case, he wouldn't be making a Santa Claus TV series for Disney Plus. If Disney didn't want him to work for a project there because of that, they right. would just not have him working for him then at all. Right. So he's so he was just too busy. That's and, and you know that's and he's a little older thing. too. You and know? then the whole thing you know they're saying is that it's the the, the movie, not the toy. The movie character, right? And then the toy. He's is, the toy. He's the toy. He's the toy. He's not the. He's not movie. the actual yeah. uh, the character. But that's right. the in universe explanation, basically. Okay. Uh, you know, but there's this whole like I wanted to get into this. This whole like anti wokeness going on. So how did you stumble? Uh, uh, well, just um, it, like I saw a bunch of people like on social media where you know Disney or Pixar be posting about Lightyear, and then people be like, "Oh, well, you." You know, you're just trying to push your agenda, like, whether it's with... Uh, what agenda do the, the I So there's is? two things. It's the, uh, oh, you guys fired Tim Allen because he's a conservative. And then there's... And the, this came out of nowhere. Uh, basically nowhere, you know. <laughs> and then there's the other one with the, uh, the split-second lesbian kiss in the cheek thing. You know, so it's like oh, you're in the so it's yeah. like it's the whole uh, Hollywood has this woke agenda, and you know we're anti woke, and we don't want all. So there was like a conservative boycott for this movie, right? Um, it got review bombed on IMDb, right? Uh, it's right there. It says a five point three out of ten because people just bombed it. What? Yeah, when you see so they, when right, you can just go into anywhere and just do a review and like right, that doesn't make that they should never use IMDb scores ever again. No, they should because it, if people it can, people can yeah. innovate. All right, so they got thirty seven k. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that look at how many number ones are on there. Yeah. So that's the thing, right? Okay. Look at this. This is forty one point two percent of votes were one star out of ten. Fifteen thousand. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's ridiculous. That's an obvious review bomb. It's the same thing to do with Miss Marvel. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, well, I'm it's, glad that they actually do this. It's so this whole idea that they're on this crusade of anti wokeness just doesn't make any sense. As if as if Hollywood has a, an, an agenda. An agenda, right? You know, the only agenda that art has is holding a truth up to the world and allowing you to see things from a legit perspective. Or, or not even that. Yeah. Sometimes it's just well, like inclusion, it's entertainment. Yeah. Well, they, they, inclusion and entertainment. Like they don't want people to be like that. Yeah. And so what? That's not like the, the whole the whole kiss thing. They're like, oh, we don't want our children seeing this as if, as if seeing a kiss on the cheek between two women is going to turn their kids gay. Okay, well, let's just be real here. <laughs> let's just be real here. The argument, when I hear arguments about that, yeah. it's just a completely asinine. You know why? They don't want their kids seeing that. Uh, unfortunately, when you step outside, <laughs> you're going to see it all the time. You're going to fucking see it all yeah. the time, no matter what. So what, what are you talking about? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. That our argument falls flat on its face. Yeah. Because you can't protect your kids from the world. Yeah. You know, you can, the best thing you can do is guide them and give them proper information so, you know, they can grow up to be awesome adults and make some uh, good decisions, basically. And mo most kids <laughs> are going to see it. Most kids aren't going to even notice that this happened because, you know, I'll tell you this. When I saw it in theaters, I didn't even notice it. Right. It was a split second. Right. Thing. It was. It's not even a big deal. It's not like they. It's, it's not like they're shoving this kind no. of. It's not like they're on the floor, under. you know, like having straight up full blown. Right, right. You know, nothing <laughs> excessive. Or nothing. No, it's just a quick peck on the cheek. But you know, apparently that's just too much for the uh, the, the Christian fundamentalists out there who, who can't stand to see anything that's not white yeah. or not straight in their movies. So yeah, people uh, this, just like this idea that Hollywood uh, has a woke agenda is just completely ridiculous because, like I said, art. Art's job is to hold a lens up, to hold a mirror up to the world, yeah. and not not just that, not just that, but a magnifying glass. You know, what, basically, what this tells me is that people don't want to be confronted by their own biases. Well, not, well, yeah, there's that, but it's it, it's not an agenda, man. That's it's what I'm just, saying. It's not. They, it's, 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 it's basically it's 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 all about inclusion. It's it's oh, yeah. about not leaving some people out. The agenda is completely to, made up by them. It is. You know? There is. is no, there's no secret cabal going. We want to like show this gay stuff to other kids. You know, this is the thing. This is the thing that gets me. Do you actually think all of Hollywood, everybody, has gotten together and agreed on this damn agenda? They can't organize to do any of that shit. They can, they can barely organize to get small shit done. Like, come on, man. That's ridiculous. All for a little kids movie. This is kind and of. And it goes and it touches onto uh, the Miss Marvel stuff. You know, when yeah. they, it's like they can't yeah. stand to see a. 
to see a Pakistani teenager be represented on, on screen. But even though it, even though it's accurate to the comic, it's accurate to the character. What they want is they want things to be white and straight all the time. <laughs> As if there hasn't been enough of that anyway. <laughs> but you know, it, yeah. but all this all this this faux outrage is coming from a very uh, a minority of people who don't want to be a minority anymore, or don't want to be not the majority. But the thing about it is this, man. It's not like they're not being excluded. Right. It's not like that's being hidden away, and it's then and. What do you mean? It's like, not what uh, you. But their world. Right. You know, their world is is, is still. It well, still exists. It's always there. they're included <laughs> all the time. Right. They're <laughs> they're still included. We're just adding some more color and diversity to it. And I see this all, like all over the place. Like uh, I was looking up some stuff where uh, it was a headline that says uh, Chris Chris uh, Evans says that he doesn't want to play Captain America anymore because that's Anthony Mackie's role. Right, and then you can go in the comments, and it's like, oh, it's woke bullshit, or right. it's like, yeah, well, no, <laughs> it's like, it's this is accurate. It's accurate to the comics, right? This is happening. You know, they're not just saying like, oh, we're gonna take your whiteness and make it black, and right? It's not, they're not taking right. That's the thing. They feel <laughs> like they're we're taking. But they something see, away. they see the good old boy being replaced by someone that not they don't you know want to acknowledge. It's, and it's ridiculous. They, they're like, oh, they, it's the white fragility. Is, is basically what. Comes down and, yeah, that's what it. That's what it yeah. actually does come down yeah. to. Because stop being so damn fragile, man. It's not like you things know. are being stolen. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's, it's the other way around. It's, it's not. It's not <laughs> art's job to appease your biases. The art's job is to hold a, a lens up to the world and say this is how it looks. This is how it operates. This yeah. is how it, this is the reality. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And this let's, is let's, this is life. Let's this give people their time of day. You know, the, the days of uh, the John Wayne's and the Clark Gables are over. It's just like, you know. Yeah, man. I mean, this, it, the thing about it is, is that the face of America has changed. Like, that's how America used to be because that's what it, it, it kind of... Well, I mean, even, it, back, I mean, it was, even back then, the face of America was more color than it was. You're, I, you know what? I was I was actually just uh, about to say that. I was, I was like, the words are coming out of my mouth. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. But the thing about it is, is that they, they held, uh, uh, you know, a very strong hold on media, mm -hmm. right? So that's what they wanted to reflect it, but right. now they're realizing that that's what what they were reflecting was false. They're not quite the, even though they're still kind of the main players. Right, they are. Right, but they see but that you have to remember, they see that they're it's it's it's, it's getting towards they, the right. The thing about it is, is that you know nowadays you have to realize that America is made out of a whole lot of other things. Yeah. That's what diversity is about, and it's and all art is. Is just reflecting that and mirror. expressing it's that. It's a mirror. That's it. And it's not. And it's not being like, well, let's focus on this little part of yeah. it. It's like, no, let's focus on all of this because that's that's what reality is. <laughs> this, this is life. It's like you walk outside your house every day and, and go, well, we're all white You know, it's, just, right. it's like, no, you're gonna see a, a you know, a, a dichotomy of people all of all the shades and all the shades. You know, the art has to reflect like, that. It's like. Uh, Give me your tire and your four, but it's until it actually hits you in the face, they don't like it. And it's like, you know, yeah, man, unfortunately. You know, so. the, the tire and the four aren't just the Irish anymore. So. <laughs> I mean, I think, I, it's, it's, it just irritates me because it's, it's, it's like, you it's know, a kid's film, man. It's, yeah, they try. Like, to, there's not people at Pixar, but, like but this is like, you. Thank you. It runs, it runs like, deeper than just this, this movie. And it's, you know, people are always like, really, you think Disney has an agenda to try to. <laughs> You know, of all of all it's companies, you think Disney has an agenda? No. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, I think that's ridiculous, man. It's it's hundred percent like just yeah. I I would like to say words that I can't say right now. <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's just leave it at that. But uh, it got yeah. bombed uh, as far as the reviews are concerned. Oh, but oh, IMDb it got bombed, you know. Right. But on the actual like critic scores and stuff, it did pretty well. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and honestly I would say that it was not the greatest movie, but it was fine. Right. Um it was charming. It was, it was lighthearted, it was charming. Right. Uh, it didn't fail. It had some good moments. Would I would I have maybe written it a little different? Would I've uh you know, instead of taking place on just like one planet most of the movie, would I've maybe put it more in space and like they're adventuring around? You know, maybe that's right. something I'd like to see. Oh, that's what you're uh, but you know, you gotta think it's kind of an origin story, you know. Buzz is this guy who's still got it's got an eighty five percent audience score on RT and a seventy five percent tomato meter. Yeah. So uh, critically wise and audience wise, it, it's, it's not bad. Not bad. I mean, look. Okay. So what we're we're talking about audience? We're talking about twenty five hundred. Yeah. Right. And for critics, 
280. Yeah. And people are, uh, you know, this this crowd that's like, oh, they say go woke, get broke. It's like, no. Like it's, it, the reason it didn't do that well is because it was going up against Top Gun 2. Yeah. Like, you're not going to make money when you're going up against a billion dollar film. Yeah. It's just true. not going to happen. Yeah. But they're pointing to this monetary loss as, oh, it's because they're going woke and, you know, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. It's just, that's not, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, so, yeah. They're just, you know, people on the internet. But, you know, as far as, as, far as the movie itself, I, you know, as a Toy Story kid, I grew up with that stuff. I grew up, you know. Right. Uh, I saw, I didn't see the first Toy Story theaters. So I think I was in the, I was in a lot. I was like a year old. So, you know. Was it that long? I think it was like 93. Jeez, was it 30 some odd years now? Let's see, I, maybe it was 92. Let's see. That was the first Pixar movie. It was nine, 95. So that was three. You know, I wasn't quite going to movie theaters yet. But I did see the second one yeah, in theaters. I saw the third one and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I grew up with these movies. You know, to me it was like, hey, let's go check this out. It's just like yeah. a little bit of a nostalgia thing. And you know, I laughed. I had a, I had and everyone could relate yeah. to it. <laughs> and, anyone that had toys used to fantasize about their toys yeah. coming to life. Right. Everyone <laughs> can relate to that. Especially if like watch toys, you're like, maybe they too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, man. Yeah, that was, was a great. And every, 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 every you do a Sid out there that was just, just like sadistic. Yeah. Yeah. Sid, sadistic. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There's something behind that. I see what you did, Pixar. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, like I want to do it with, with low expectations, and I was yeah. pleasantly like, yeah, this is funny. And, you know, there's enough little callbacks to the, the Toy Story right. stuff. He, he, yeah, the villain there. He has his, like, his lines, you know. No sign of hell's in life anywhere. Oh, he has his because mind. a toy is taking. Right. It's literally like when it opens up, it says, uh, in 1995, uh, Danny uh, watched just a movie about his. He had a toy about his favorite movie or whatever. Yeah. This is that movie. Right, right. So yeah. they really hammered it home. Like, this is the movie that, they made Andy, it clear. that Andy watched and then bought a toy of. Right. So obviously, the toy is going to have lines from the movie. Yeah. So they had these lines in there. Yeah. So it was funny. It was great. Okay. And Chris Evans did a good job. He had the cadence down. It was. Yeah, uh, it was good. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so now he's got under his belt both Lightyear and yeah. Captain America. <laughs> All right, that's not it's not too bad. Not too bad yeah. for your career. Uh, hopefully, Pixar doesn't get like uh, you know because those guys they they work so hard. They, they love their work. Yeah. They they're really passionate about what they do. Um, yeah. So hopefully, they don't get discouraged by this this crazy. Honestly, I hope I I hope not. Disney's actually yeah. been getting hit, um, you know, with this kind of nonsense. Yeah. Throughout most of their this properties, this past year, like you, yeah, yeah because on. you see yeah. it with Kenobi, you see it with Star Wars, you yeah. see it, so so it's kind of oh, like the, the whole Reba thing. It's like right, you know, right. So you, you kind of you see this nonsense. everywhere. I, I think there's yeah. just this group of people that are just anti Disney and they're yeah. just coming out. But you see them like YouTube and stuff too, or these these you know these these uh, and like the, these the what do you call it the antagonistic crowd. Yeah. Who, who preys on these trolls, man. Yeah, and they're like, oh, you know, go woke, get broke, and, and you know, trying to say that. Yeah, that these trash, nas- nationalist yeah. trolls. Yeah, yeah basically, it's, that's like, what's, what's going on. You know, any criticism is deserved because of this reason or whatnot. And, you know, I think it's okay to acknowledge that, like with Reba, and we're, we're about to get to Obi-Wan right now, like the whole right. Reba thing, it's like, her, char- like her character just wasn't written well. Yeah. You know, and her acting in some places just wasn't that great. But she had to you know, do with what she worked with, what had to work with, and stuff. It's, it's similar to how like there's a, there's a lot of issues. I'm a kid. Well, what are you doing? Are you doing? Yeah, I'm, Ellison is waiting. Like uh, man, he's, like, he's, he's the guy at the end of the end of the row with a you know butcher knife. Right? I'm that guy. Open. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah a, little, right. a little more. Uh, you're you're you know, being a, kind. A, you're being a little, kind. A little more the kind side. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, like, I, like half this page is Kenobi, so you know, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get into it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just like with Reem, it's like, yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's not because uh, I, I'm like sitting there going, oh, why, why are they having like a black lady in the Star Wars show? It's like, I don't give a shit about that. You know, right. her character wasn't that great. <laughs> I mean, look, um, Finn well, got the some, same some, type of burn, you know, when well, Finn. Let me go back to the whole Disney thing. It's like, oh, if, if they were truly like uh, the agenda, well, why would they erase him from the posters in China, you know? Wait, what was that? Yeah, when they released like Force Awakens stuff, they, they deleted digitally, uh, uh, John Boyega from the posters of China and stuff like that. Too. I didn't know that. Yeah, because Ch- China's super racist. So, wow, yeah. no kidding. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like if, if Disney has a woke agenda, then you why know, would they? Yeah. yeah. It's like maybe it's the money that they want. 
Yeah, you know? of course. They, <laughs> yeah, they want that Chinese one. That's very true. Um, but Paramount actually did it with the Top Gun too. They said, you know what, Mike, we don't want to be a part of the. We don't want to release it. So. Well. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get in there. No, I mean that's no, that's actually some artist integrity, and I'm pretty sure. Well, they, want, like, they wanted to make changes to Top Gun 2, and Tom Cruise is like, They nope. did, right. It was, <laughs> Tom Cruise was like, no. And, and you know, Tom Cruise is an executive on that on that film. It's so. like, Zenu said no. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy, man. You know, it's not from the, silent, from the Scientology shit. He's he really, held hostage. He, he is. I feel like David Miscavige, where's your wife? Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. I think that's what's happening. No, that's my theory. That's my theory. Wait, where are they? I think no. <laughs> they're, outside, they're outside the door. They're waiting for us. <laughs> no, I think that's my theory, man. Just a little side note here. I think that, you know, Tom, Tom, I like Tom Cruise. I've seen so many documentaries about that. I like, really like Tom be, Cruise. And I think he's an, uh, I think he's a very, very good guy. He's a little dirt on somebody than the old hostage. I think that's what happened to him. I think that he, he got wrapped up into this kind of thing when he was young. And it's, it's gotten to the point where he's, He's just, you know, he got stuck in a cult and he can't let go at this point, man. It's too yeah. late. He's in too deep. I think uh, yeah. the, lately there's been articles and stuff um, here and there about how he's, you know, slowly distancing himself from the church and all that. He's going to need a lot of help. He's going to, hey, this, <laughs> this is a guy that, like, anybody he's worked with throughout his whole career, if they have a birthday, he sends them a cake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, doesn't matter, like, you know, yeah. like, I don't know, maybe I just like cake. But that's awesome. <laughs> he's a thoughtful guy. He's like a, a bad guy to me. No, he's a know? thoughtful guy. He yeah. takes care of his crew. And he's a he's, you know, he's a massive movie star. He cares about movies. He's a, a yeah, he does. He cares about movies yeah. a lot. The lengths that he goes to make good movies. Yeah. Like he's not a slouch, man. No. You know, like we talked about this last this last podcast we talked about it. And yeah. How, how he really dives right in and it not only elevates what he did with the crew. Yeah, uh, not only elevates the planes. movie, but he elevates the crew to do better too. Right. He's like you know. No, you're gonna like come on this journey. Let's make this. He great. goes above and beyond, yeah. man. So he's he's. He, I think he's a great guy. It's just unfortunate that he's stuck so uh, weird. Thing. Kenobi. Now we're, we're getting in there. Yeah, let's get to <laughs> let's get to Kenobi, man. So uh, I have it right here. It says perhaps one of the most divisive shows in recent memory for Star Wars fans. Yeah. Obi Wan Kenobi recently wrapped up its limited, potentially not series on Disney Plus. Fans are treating this as fan service in the forms of Vader and Kenobi's penultimate confrontation, as well as return of. Qui-Gon Yeah, no yeah, yeah, yeah. Played by another, another than uh, Liam Neeson himself. That was nice. I like that he that came out. Nice oh, he came out. He's like, well, I don't want anybody else to play him. It's like, who's gonna play Qui-Gon yeah. Jinn besides you? Dude? They like, have to. They, I, I mean, mean, they have to get Liam Neeson. Yeah, they have to. Which I thought was, was good. Weird. So uh, those, as far as the last episode, those are the two things that I really enjoyed. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, the acting, I thought Hayden Christensen did really well. Yes. With those that little exchange with Obi Wan. So let's talk about episode five and six. Okay, we'll start with five. Okay. Okay. You want, what? Do you want me to go? You, you to go, go first, because okay. I'll rip it to shreds. So, <laughs> so five, I think, was incredibly limited by the excessive use of the volume. Yes. Um, you know, there's that's one thing the series didn't do well. Might well, I just add that I believe all of the episodes were extremely. Well, yeah, I'm about to say that. Yeah. So I think this the series failed. Uh, like spectacularly well in the fact that they did not use on location shooting basically at all outside. Yeah. I don't think they used any like actual sets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, like and there were plenty of places that I saw and that I, were used. I don't, I don't in buy that. Yeah, that they should have done. I don't buy that it was the pandemic that caused that because so many Sounds things nice. out there like they shot things, FET. They shot FET during yeah. the pandemic. Stranger Things four was shot during. Right, that's mostly practical. Well, was it was it the second series of uh, the second season rather of the Mandalorian? Yeah, shot Mandalorian was some was shot there too. So yeah, there's no know, excuse. No excuse at all. Like it's it has its purposes in, in certain like, circumstances. Yeah, um, it's a great piece of technology, but when you rely on it for all your scenes and everything else, you're very limited. And by in terms of uh, how your actors can move around, how they can interact with their sets, how they can interact with each other, just the entire atmosphere. Uh, it just seems how you can set up your shots. You, right. you don't have the flexibility that you would in a normal environment. And episode five, I think, is the most egregious with that because they literally just, it was the entire episode is basically in this circle 
which is where they, they land a ship. Right. That's, that's where it's mostly the right. whole episode's based. It's, 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 on a, it's on a base. Yeah, it, it's in hallways or like on this They're little cheating. base inside of a They're cheating. Crater. They're, yeah. they, the whole time. And I can see, I, I mean, coming from production, any, anybody coming from production, and I mean, most Star Wars fans uh, were kids that got into movies because they loved the film. So we, you're going to see yeah. some of this stuff. And they were cheating, man. They were cheating in a lot of these episodes. Yeah. Uh, the only uh, people like people, a lot of people would mistakenly say that original you know, Star Wars is like a like a CGI like um, you know it advanced that that thing. Yeah, they but, did. But actually, the original trilogy, the only CGI they ever used was with the Death Star plans come up in the computer. Everything else is practical effects and miniatures. Mm -hmm. All right, I gotta double check that. Out. Yeah, the the special editions obviously George put all that. No, no, wait a minute, wait. You sure? Yeah, CG? No. absolutely. It was with the digital. It was uh, when the Death Star plans comes up, and it's that little you know digital thing. That was the, the originally the only CGI they had. Interesting. Yeah, the rest oh, of it was okay. practical effects and miniatures. Okay. No yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, you know, but then you okay. get the, the prequels. Obviously, were heavy on it, but not in the way that like. You know, like this series did. Yeah, you know, and then they remastered it. I remember when they did that. Like JJ came on to do Force Awakens, he actually went back and did a lot of. They went back to that method of using practical effects. He did. He stuff like that. You know, all that stuff, shooting on location. You know, going to Tunisia and stuff like that. Right. I don't know if he went to Tunisia, but you know what I mean. Like he went to a desert environment. Went out there to desert. Shot. Yeah. Whereas this is all this cheating. You know. They yeah. rely too much on and it, man. They were, the, I don't know what, I don't know, what, I mean, were, the budgets, I don't know what the budgets were on the this. The cinematography is just kind of, oh, God, like, please, just, yeah, you know, man, it was, I mean, okay. we're in five still, so we're in episode five. We're in episode so. five, so the cinematography was shit. <laughs> All of it was shit. I couldn't understand why they did certain shots the, the way they did. The shaky cam. The shaky uh, cam was awful, man, yeah. and you knew they were in a closed set. I swear to God, I felt like I was having flashbacks of Xena. Warrior Princess. I was like, who's behind this? Did they bring back that crew? What shit is it? This is Kenobi. I love Warrior Princess at the Cape, by the way. It was just, it was bad. The music was bad. Everything yeah. about it. But you have to, like, as, a, as a, you know, a company that owns the rights to all these musical pieces, why not reuse some of these? And, you know, but why? not only that, let me just, let me just yeah. put it to you this way, right? Okay, look at the previous Star Wars uh, series that have done great. The Mandalorian, right? Right. Has a very specific score. Yeah. That even if you didn't have the visuals and you just heard it. Who did? Right? Uh, score. Uh, there's a Swedish guy uh, that's friends with Childish Gambino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's actually, pretty, pretty nice guy. Uh, Favreau brought him in. But, all Gor right. Gorenson. Uh, I'm sorry, what's his Gorenson. name? Gorenson. Ludwig Gorenson. Ludwig Gorenson, yeah. right. Um, if, you, if you don't see it and you hear it, you're like, okay, I know where that's from. Yeah, the, I, mean, uh, the man, I know like the Mandalorian. Hand flute. Right. There's some kind of flute stuff <laughs> happening there. Yeah. You know, horns it's, and all it's that. It's the motif of the character. Right. You don't have the personality. A, you know, it's right. almost like the uh, the Avengers, where you don't have a motif for each character. It's just a general, you know. Right. But you know the Avengers. So, you yeah, know yeah, when you hear it. But like each character. And the same thing with Spider-Man. Like, with, like uh, you know. Oh, um, and look, and all right. So let me get back to my point. So yeah, Boba Fett, right? Yeah. yeah. Boba Fett thing comes out, they it as a boom, 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 Fett, boom. You know, that, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, it's dope. You know, you know when you hear it. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Right. What does Obi-Wan have? I don't know. He doesn't have shit. He doesn't have the damn thing. I'm, I'm probably yelling, probably his mic is going out like crazy right now. But this, this is what I'm talking about. They didn't finesse it. They yeah. didn't have the same type of care and attention no. for the little nuances. And things like that. It was very rushed. Out of everybody, listen, how is it possible that a Mandalorian gets all this type of stuff? Like, in, in the way that they treat Kenobi is just is blasphemous to me, man. Because he is uh, one of the key original characters from the original series. How can he not have his own score, you know, in his series? How can it not have top-of-the-line cinematography? How does it? Why does it feel like it's a bad uh, CW low budget uh, series? It, it's to me, it's mind boggling, man. Episode five, when it came down to the showdown where Reva came, like some of the story is not actually bad, right? Yeah. You know, in pa it, on paper, it's not actually bad, but it's just the execution that completely sucked. Yeah. 
and they didn't do a good job. I'm sorry. The cinematography, the, the audio, um, the, the writing especially was kind of the, the writing was bad. The writing was bad as well, and 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 I don't think the actors had a lot to work with. The direction just wasn't there as far as like where to where to uh, direct that emotion because because a, a director that's their main job is to direct emotion. Yeah. The director does two things: he directs the emotion of the audience and directs the emotion of the actors. Because it's like a symphony, man. You have your highs, you have your lows, but you're it's like you're taking the audience on this yeah. emotional journey. They, it just it didn't work well. It just kind of Reva was kind of over the top because I, I'm pretty sure that she was working with whatever she had. Yeah. And it was just kind of very little direction there without a composer telling them like, no, no, this is the little details that you need to do to work this it was way. Very, I, I think I, I said last time it was like uh, someone who's pretending on the playground to be like a, like a evil person. Right. It was very over the top. It right. Was, That's what I'm saying. Know. Like she was, she was trying to be the, the, the playground bully Yeah. and she needed to be more nuanced. I just, I wanted to care for the character, but I, at the end of it, I just didn't care about her. Yeah. I, said, I don't think she, like it became like the, the Reba and Obi-Wan Kenobi show where it should have just been more Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. yeah, it should be more Obi Wan Kenobi and Vader. Yeah, um, not enough, like, all they kind of shoehorn her in there, and yeah, she has an interesting, not even interesting more Vader backstory. Than, um, the backstory was okay, yeah. but it was just it seemed unnecessary, and it's just like, well, why, why am I being yeah. fo- why am I it was being? Shoehorned. It was like, here you go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm being force fed this character when it's just like I don't. Can, you, can I get more Kenobi? Yeah. You know, can I get some more of the other stuff that more you Vader, actually... More Kenobi, more Luke. Right, you yeah. know, like she's not on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you promoted. Yeah. Um, more Luke, too. It's like supposed to More be. Luke as yeah. well, man. He was, that was, he was entrusted in... Bail Bail Organa's job to take care of Leia. It's only one Kenobi's job to watch over Luke. Not only that, but uh, another problem that I have, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the fans are, are, are complaining about this as well, is that it's the it doesn't match with canon okay because you know just recently i saw episode four again and i was just like you know when when vader and, and kenobi see each other again and then i'm looking at the the series and i'm like no and then leia she's acting like she never saw kenobi and never had like a connection with him. well so in actually i watched episode four again uh I think it matches up a little more than I thought it wouldn't have. Uh, oh, so. the last one. So uh, please tell me how forgiving so, you are with. So okay. So for example, um, when Luke says, "Oh, I'm with Ben Kenobi," she's like, "Ben Kenobi." She wouldn't know who Ben Kenobi was unless she had known about that before. The original message. You remember the original message? Well, in the original message it says, "Obi Wan Kenobi, uh, you know, you served my father in Clone Wars. Now he uh, asked for your help in his fight against the Empire." So I think that's another thing that kind of like you can give a little bit of slight forgiveness to is because she's using that example of fighting with the Clone Wars and then hey we have this, this other war going on. So it's like you know you're connecting that to that. But the whole Ben Kenobi thing, it's like if she had never met Obi-Wan Kenobi before that, she would have no way of knowing that he was Ben Kenobi. So when he's in the when he's like she's like, Aren't you a little short to be a stormtrooper? He's like, Oh what? He's like, Oh yeah, who's got work who rescued with Ben Kenobi? She's like, Ben Kenobi! All right, so it's like okay, you know, fair enough. So there's that point. So I mean, obviously, you gotta like jump through a couple hoops, but I don't think it's as big as it, I thought it was gonna be. Uh, okay, like, until episode okay. six. I think episode six kind of redeemed some of the questions that I had. About some it. of it. I remember yeah. you. We yeah. spoke about that. Yeah, we, not not all of them for sure. No, uh, no. I think the whole like at first I was like, well, what, like Obi Wan just ran away. He's just like, there's no way that's the fight. Well, the way to, back in episode three? Yeah, it's like, there's no way that's the, yeah, the when fight. When Vader was holding out. him over the fire. Yeah, says, you know, last that was, week, the, that was the worst I conference. Was, I was with the Lord, and now I'm the master. It's like, you can't have that if he's running away from you. Yeah. So they had that, you know, that when oh, one does the, the Jesus t pose, he throws rocks at him, it's like, you know. This totally beats the shadow. Right. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you, right there, you're, you're right. You were the learner. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. So, all right. So let me just say this. That. That final scene, that fight, yeah. is the only redeeming thing yeah. in that entire series. That's the only thing that gets an okay for me because that's that's actually very satisfying that I actually got I, I got to see that. I was like, okay, this you is you really got to see that it was like that's Anakin Skywalker in that suit, right? No, yeah. but this is Kenobi. This is General Kenobi, oh, yeah, yeah. who I remember, and it's no he's no slouch. Yeah. 
He's like a badass Jedi, man. They sent him out to the Clone Wars. Like, he got shit yeah, done. General, General Kenobi. Yeah, <laughs> man. Like, he got shit done. He tapped back into that. And I'm like, oh, yes, that's awesome. I'm, I'm ready to see this again. Um, so, yeah, when he kind of let loose and you saw his full usage of the Force, that was satisfying. That was great. It was cool to see a little bit of, a, like, a, a midway point between old prequel lights for battles and then, like, the new trilogy, the, the old, yeah, old trilogy, course, yeah. where it's slower and more samurai-esque. And yeah. So, it's, you know, you still saw some badass moves and stuff where they, they go back to back. And That's true. You notice that uh, Vader goes from one hand to two hands, like, oh, shit, I got to actually, like... <laughs> right, yeah, 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 he's used to doing one-handed one things. <laughs> but yeah. then, uh, you know, uh, the whole... You get this dichotomy of Anakin and Vader, where Anakin peeks out a little bit, and then Vader kind of shuts him down again, like with the whole, you know, I am not your failure, Obi Wan. You know, you didn't do yeah. that job, or yeah. I did. It's like that first part was like, I'm not your failure. That's Anakin, 100. Okay. Because it, and I like the with the contrast. I don't know if it's on purpose, but the contrast with the lightsaber glow, where yeah. at some points where he's talking, it has that blue glow against his face. And it shifts to his red lightsaber going against his face. You know, right. It's like that, that duality. Of, so, of yeah, mind. so that's good cinematography. Uh, but what, <laughs> I give him that. But what was bad cinematography was their over reliance on the close up. Yeah. Give me some var- variety. Don't, like, you just always right here with the camera. It's like, give me a variety. Uh, close set. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. There was, yeah, that's the thing. It's just like you're, you're working with, with, you know, limited space. Uh, but that was good. Like I, I love that part, especially with. Um, uh, I don't know if most people caught this, but there's mm-hmm. a point he says, uh, "I did and killed." Like that's hundred percent Hamble Lecter, hundred percent. You think so? The, I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll honestly like, look. I'm a right out clip. Right. <laughs> <Clip time>. Like <laughs> side by side, it's like I'll, right. I'll show. It. It's like uh, when Hamble Lecter has that smirk and he has the same smirk, the same like. Right. It's hundred percent like. Interesting. Uh, yeah, like, he's tapping into that dark side. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if that was a Hayden thing or like a direction thing, but you know, uh, it's cool to see Hayden get this opportunity to, to actually like showcase his chops a little bit more. Yes, um, and actually have some time being Vader, right? Because I don't think he had enough time to no. be Vader. And it, but with this too, it's like not only is it Vader and Anakin at one time, it's like both. And I think they did, uh, uh, you know, pretty not like the best, but pretty well at combining the voices. I think. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. I didn't quite like how it would shift. Back and forth, but that doesn't make uh, much sense. And, and, uh, and all, uh, it should be a, uh, well, it should be a, a, it should be a combination it should be a of combination both. of mix like uh, of both and a little not, less not like, not like Anakin and Vader. Well, Anakin right, and right, <laughs> and I did and I did catch that. And another thing I did like is just um, they it, it it should have been a combination of both. And there were some times where James Earl Jones just sounded like an old guy. Yeah. Well, uh, so James Earl Jones wasn't even involved in the series. He it, wasn't. His voice was uh, provided by a company called Reese Feature. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he was actually the voice in this, which I think is actually pretty um, good like, technology-wise because uh, okay. I think with this, he actually sounds better than he did in Rogue One when James Earl Jones actually voiced him. Do you think so? I think, yeah, because there's a couple times like where I don't um, think in so. Rogue One where he's talking to Krennic and it's like, it just sounds like old man... James. I, I, I actually <laughs> like I, I like the authenticity, man. Okay. I, I, I actually and, and I, I, I prefer. I would say that the AI of like voice technology is getting like so much better. Than I didn't know that. Than I thought I thought it was Joe. Well, see, that's a good. That's a good point. That's right. that's, all. <laughs> that's a good point. I, did, I didn't know that. But this was my complaint. My complaint was that uh, you know I can hear age in okay. the voice. Yeah. You know, like it sounded like an old man. Okay. You know, and I understand that it's supposed to be you know like a robotic song. Sounding yeah. thing. They should have taken Hayden Christensen's voice, uh, you know, robotized it or whatever the case well, so, is, uh, and then and then made it sound like a little closer, just a yeah. little closer to so, uh, as Joe. As far as I know, like in the terms of categories, it's just Vader talking. Uh, it's actually Hayden, his cadence. Yeah. Is him. So they, he talks similar, similar to how they did it with um, Luke Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Where uh, Mark Hamill is, he does the lines, and then they kind of like put through the voice AI and then change right. it. Okay, but it has the cadence and the, you know, the, the, how they talk. Yeah, and they just make it Vader. So I think that they, they Hayden did a good job with that, where he's actually, like, especially when he's with the mask off, where he actually starts to sound like Vader, yeah. even without the voice going on. Right, he has that you know slower uh, pause, 
you know, instead of just talking fast, like, you right. know, uh, I am not your failure, Obi Wan. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, it's more of that slow, methodical yeah. voice. Yeah, so, that's a typical thing. I just I just had it, I just noticed that and he sounded a little, little aged. Yeah, a little bit yeah. aged, and I'm like, this is kind of young Vader here. I, I do like, uh, just on another point, is yeah. uh, cleaning up that whole Darth aspect. Mm -hmm. Where he's like, well, I guess my friend is truly dead. Goodbye, Darth. Yes, because which is a very important point. Yeah, episode four, he's like, we well, only master of evil, Darth. <laughs> and it's like, right, because he sees, uh, he believes that Anakin is gone. Right, he's not redeemed. Right, and that was it. Yeah, he kept so, calling him. Anakin. He won't even call him Vader. He won't even right. call him the time he, of day. He so that, but that's what we get right. the context now. Yeah, you get the context. Yeah, that, that was very. That, that was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's so Obi Wan uh, only sees him as just a, like a Sith. He's a dog. Yeah, he's become a legit Sith now. And apparently, yeah. which is rare. Because all the the other ones, you know, the inquisitors with the lightsabers, they aren't Sith. Yeah. Just to clarify things. Well, that, that goes, not officially. Yeah, that goes back into like old canon too, where you know you have your the rule of two, rule of two, but you still have your dark side users. The dark side who, users, who would yeah. be your little pawns. dark or dark Jedi, what they call. Them. Yeah. 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 Little pawns and stuff. Um, yeah. I, yeah. do, I do like how the Grand Inquisitor was kind of like that voice of reason that like, <laughs> Varys didn't listen to. He's like, well, we have to. We should like, screw Obi Wan. He's like, the, they're they're right there, the rebels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they, yeah, like they're but they're also, the important. Why part. do they just tell Tie Fighters? Why are you shooting your little lasers at the fucking ship? And yeah, like that was that was bad uh, effects too. Where it's like, just looked like it just ships don't fly like that in Star Wars. They yeah. don't do this back and forth thing. Yeah, not don't. that fast. Yeah, that's the only no, space. They, how yeah. much space they had to cover to do that? Yeah, that's a lot of space. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah, they, just do it like this. yeah they don't move like that. It looks like it's one of the stringers going. Like, you know, <laughs> they were swinging them. <laughs> it's like what the fuck's going on? You know, like also like they. Uh, that's what I'm. I can imagine like Grand Quest is like. So should, should we scramble the fleet? And Ben is like, no, just shoot them with our lasers. That is <laughs> a ridiculous <laughs> thing. Like this is where Vader we're talking about. Like he just doesn't travel alone. He travels with a fucking, you know, like well, there's, 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 there's a bunch of them. There's a whole Tie Fighter fleet. Yeah, there. that's what I'm saying. Go out there, and shoot the damn. Right. It's, it's a problem when Vader shows up because you know you're probably not getting away. And then also like go back to like continuity and canon and all that uh, with the episode five where he like just was just goes back to like uh, like Force and Leash games and the like old bitter comics where he. Fucking grabs the uh, right. That was dope. Right, you know? that was cool. But then also, why couldn't do that the next one? He but, saw, uh, yeah, he actually. Oh my god, <laughs> he actually stood there and saw it fly off for, for just a few <laughs> seconds. When he noticed that the ship was a decoy, he was just like, "Oh." But then you go, you, you go think about like Rogue One. It's like, well, why can't do that in the Hulk scene? Oh yeah, that's true. He'd be like, "Oh well, you got the plans to the damn door. I guess I can't do anything about this." Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's some inconsistency here. But in any case, like that one was stupid. Like, if we're, you know, in that in that particular moment of time, that just didn't make any sense. And then on top of that, at the end of uh, episode, what was it? Episode six, yeah. right? Um, same thing. You know, he got. It, 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 they they kind of just ruined some. Some parts were cool, but then there's some parts where they just ruined the character of Vader for me. Because he's just this badass. I, I, that's how I got. Like he's right. just this guy that you don't fuck with, and you just gotta end up in a bad situation every time you cross him. Like, oh, so, yeah. Okay, that, yeah. so my thing is, is that they, they did a very similar thing at the end, where you know uh, Obi Wan caught, you know, just cut his uh, it's very, it's like, his mask open. It's, it's like poetry rhymes with Ahsoka and all that. Yeah. He, well, he's just, you know, at the end, they did in Rebels. He's didn't just, they? he's just standing there. You know, and he's he's talking all the shit and he's like letting Obi Wan walk away. Like, dude, you're still breathing. <laughs> well barely because Obi Wan smashes a uh, breather. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 that's true. I love that little like that moment though. Like the when he that's takes true. the butt of his blade and he smashes the you know. That's true. He, he did the, he did do that. Yeah, he did do that. Um So Vader's looked weak as hell at that point. And he was also overcome with emotion and and whatnot. I guess but because it's just the Amber was like uh, he's basically like, you good, bro? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. I don't. He's like, well, we will go tear apart the system until we find him. He's like, uh, if you can't overcome your, you know, your emotions, maybe we have a problem here. He's like, oh, could we be nothing? But that makes sense of why they never like went to look for him again. I mean, Ember yeah, was I like, Ember was like, if you can't get over your emotions of your former master, then we have a problem here because <laughs> yeah, obviously yeah. there's something going on. Maybe there's other <laughs> shit you need to do. 
Yeah. Maybe I have to get one of these other uh, dark side pieces that I have laying around. <laughs> yeah, man. Surprised to see um, uh, Ian McDermott come up and, uh, you know, do that work. Yeah. That was a surprise. I wasn't yeah. expecting him to come up. Yeah, that was. Uh, oh, they had a couple of surprises at the end there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Too bad. You know, the, uh, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, uh, I think McDermott said that he was always just going to be the emperor whenever. Yeah. You know, like yeah. he was ready for that call. I guess I, I, I don't know why I didn't expect him to like, show up in a Vader series, but, you know. Yeah. Um, I would say that Joel Edgerton, highlight of the series, great job as Owen. Absolutely did fantastic. a fantastic job. Yeah. Um, you know, like uh, as someone who like grew up with a stepdad, the whole uh, he is my own. It's like right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, man. No, he did a great job. You know, and like it, he really was. You know, like really he gave some he, substance he for the flushed, character. So much more. Yeah. Like now, now, now to me, that that is Owen Lars to me. Right. Not the the one that gets burnt to a crisp. But no, not that guy. But then you wonder, it's like, well, as bad as they were, it's like, man, they must have like put up a big fight with those stormtroopers. They like hit like that's true. And, like these motherfuckers like. Burn him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, yeah. Like, Baru, you get some context behind that. Baru, like, yeah, like, back. Looking like down. Al Capone Baru over there, just like, <laughs> with, the, with the hidden, like, drawer of guns, and Owen's like, who did I marry? He's yeah. like, yeah. 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 yeah, that wasn't bad, yeah. dude. That and wasn't I love the, the realization at the end, it's like, this, uh, like, other ones, like, you know, he, he doesn't need my protection anymore, he needs you. Yeah. And he's like, ah, want to meet him? Yeah, and then, then, oh, <laughs> and then, then it was, oh, so, all right, so how did you feel about Reva? And the whole kidnapping situation. I, I thought it was unnecessary. Thank you. I thought it was unnecessary. The whole the whole cut back and forth between the two fights was ridiculous. It should have just been that one fight uh, altogether. Yeah. They, they do a little bit of a cut back and forth in episode three with the uh, the last goal they had there, yeah. but it wasn't as egregious as it was in this series where it was like, okay, a few slashes and then boom, cut back to Tatooine, right? And then chasing blah, blah blah. Like no, that like if they're gonna have a moment like that, it should have been maybe the Grand Inquisitor who kind of like catches on to something, right? Or what, whatnot. It just should have been like, I like the, I like the other aspect, I like the other half of it with Owen and you know Baru, yeah, like sh- the showing their chops and how they want to defend Luke. Right. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't, cool. I don't like how they got to it. Yeah, and I didn't like how they got to and it. And also like you know like, it's a big stretch for her to like put two or two together that easily, dude. It, yeah. Because I don't think uh, in the hologram, I don't think uh, uh, Organa says that he's his kid at all. He just says the child of Tatooine or whatever. Yeah, like they weren't sp- yeah. specific. They were reaching, man. Yeah. They were reaching. And also, dude, why the hell would Bail Organa like say some? He, like, well, first of all, why would he have Obi Wan come out of hiding to go take care of Leia? And leave well, that's that's a big yeah. question. Yeah. <laughs> that's a much but also, question. almost completely fuck it up by you know. Yeah, man. A lot of it just, it seems like a reach for me. I didn't like the end when she's just like, she comes to her senses because she was- I saw a lot, of, a lot of like fan theories who said that she should have just like sepuked herself and like killed herself. And like, this is yeah, I mean, that would have been great too. Uh, I, I, read, I read an article uh, today about- But they made her too much of a, a main character. Yeah. And I was just like, who, why? I read, like, I read like the original writers like in the scene um, where she fights Vader like that, in the original writing, original version, uh, she gets actually killed by Vader, hundred percent. Yeah, that's what should have happened. Yeah, I think like, so. You know, I don't, why are we getting a Reva spinoff series? I don't understand. We don't that. need that. I don't. I I don't get it. I again, I feel like they're just. Listen, it's one thing when the fans or the audience ask for it, yeah. right? It's another thing when they're trying to push a character that doesn't get that much traction. Like it almost seems yeah. forced to me. It actually is seem. It, it is forced. Um, like, like no, like the Star Wars is all about. Um, like, I, I don't see any this, kind of push. Star Wars is all about this like this long, intense buildup of characters. Right. Like, they have a character that's just like thrown in and rushed, and the story doesn't really make any sense. It just it doesn't feel. Listen, natural. it took me a long time to um, feel the the way I did for um, Jin Jari, uh, the Mandalorian. Because a lot of his character, first of all, his character was well written, so you get like this mystery of uh, this interesting fellow who you don't know who he is, you just know right. he's a Mandalorian. You start to understand a little bit about the Mandalorian lore, which makes it even more interesting. Yeah. Then you start to understand of the specific person who he really is, why he can't take off the mask, 
why it's a big deal when he actually does take off the mat. So you go through this journey, and by the end of it, you actually care about this guy. And then you want to see more of him. That's how it typically works. Not just throwing some character in there where it's just like you don't have a connection, you don't get too much of a backstory. The, the series is not about her. It's an exploration about Obi-Wan yeah. and his guilt and how he feels. Like, the, you know, the after effects of possibly creating, you know, like Vader. Like, he has to struggle with that. And then the finding out, like, it should have been her that told him that it was Anakin. No, that's another thing that pissed me <laughs> off, man. Like, how many people actually know this? He should have, like, had to fight Why Vader. does she know this? How does she know this? He should have had to, like, fight Vader and been, like, you know, then do the whole helmet thing and be like, holy shit, that's Anakin. And that would have been a great reveal. <laughs> because if he hadn't known all the way up until then, that would have been cool yeah. until he saw his face. I don't know, man. They're, they're forcing Reva. I just, I, yeah, that's how it feels to me. I, I'm not invested in the character. I really don't care. I don't understand why she's getting a spinoff. That the, 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 at the very end, the last episode, the whole thing where she has this change of heart and she walks back with Luke, and I'm just like, also, also this, right? So she, now she knows that Luke Skywalker exists, and, she, and Obi Wan's just like, okay, bye. Yeah, dude. It, uh, no one's mean? supposed to know that. No, Luke, no nobody's is. supposed to know <laughs> any of that shit. So she just walks off. No, not first, only that, not only that, but now she knows everything. Yeah. She knows who Vader is. She knows Obi where Obi Wan is. Who Obi Wan is protecting? Both of the kids. She has way too much fucking information. <laughs> who is this character with all of this info? <laughs> this is pissing me off. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. My neighbors are like, "What the fuck's going on?" I mean, hey, I'm just getting very passionate, man. But uh, that's that's the thing. It was just the it Disney wasn't channel original movie. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't my, my big thing is this. It wasn't handled uh, with care. It really wasn't. Um, yeah, man. I, I, it, it just seemed like it was rushed. In a way, it got was. Mark handled. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That, all right. I think so to, to end Obi-Wan, though, I would right. say that. Um, I'm done with that. The, uh, my. I would say, like, appreciative surprise was uh, Qui Gon Jinn. Qui Gon Jinn was a nice surprise. You know, he came up to, like, what, you know, this should be, like, the end credits, which is what it was. The whole time I'm going, like, all right, get the hello there. I'm like, what the fuck is Qui Gon? I'm like, right, they, they did mention it. They met multiple times. Multiple times it's mentioned. Yeah, I'm like, where the hell is he? Yeah. Time, I'm like, where the hell is he? <laughs> and then, boom, pops up in a little silhouette. At the end. Um, yeah. Not the greatest cinematography. And it's just, and yeah. again, again, not the best cinematography. <laughs> like, why is, why is he, like, this tall? <laughs> you know? it's so weird. You but, know, you know, uh, when you're a force ghost, you shrink. Apparently. So, like, we're getting, I want to talk about the force ghost thing, too. It's, um, <laughs> it's like, I, I like the dialogue, and I like the genuosity of it's a nice uh, little uh, playing Neeson's you know give him character and all that yeah it's a nice and, little quirky you know, thing uh, it's like a, I've been here the whole time it's a generational thing of like master and apprentice and then apprentice master and apprentice you know it's like Qui-Gon is like the, the granddaddy in a sense yeah uh, so but if uh, you just weren't ready to see right so you can't see him until then well then why can Luke just see Obi Wan right away right you must go to the Dagobah system you just pop there's no way Luke's a full fledged Jedi. That's true. It wasn't any, it wasn't any training well, in that stuff. Well, you know, but it, inconsistency. Right. But if it takes Obi Wan ten years to see Qui Gon Jinn, why can't Luke just be like, oh, Luke there he is. is special? Okay. <laughs> he's, he's very special. He's a special young boy. He has yeah, very, very very special. Yes, he's got powers <laughs> that nobody else has. He is his father's son. Freaking Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's exactly what, yeah, really? that's, yeah, it's Harry Potter. <laughs> I think it's time for a commercial break uh, from our sponsors. We're back. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so, um, all right, next up, the unbearable weight of massive talent. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of overacting. Um, yeah, um, there's a lot. There's a lot in this movie. It's actually pretty entertaining. No, it's really well done. I, I yeah. liked it more than I expected. Yeah. Very charming. So, I, like, uh, low expectations again for this one. Yeah. I went and see it. Uh, yeah. I, went, I just, I always like, like Nick, 
Nick Cage's movies. Um, yeah, I give him a shot every time. Yeah, you know, you every can, time, man. Because like, you don't know, it's a bit of a gamble, but yeah, he does so much work. It's you know, you get you know, for every few bad ones, you get a really great one. Uh, <laughs> but are they bad? I don't know. There's There's a, okay, it's so, not because he's acting bad. She just has bad characters that he's playing and stuff, you know. But he makes it interesting. Yeah. Now, hear me out here. This okay. is this is probably one of those things. If anyone has seen Community, I know Abed, the character in Community, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> but he has a whole spiel about it. He, he does <laughs> have a whole spiel about it. You know, I think he's doing a paper on it uh, with his, his research. Um, but does he? Nicholas Cage elevates a movie. He doesn't bring it down necessarily. He doesn't. Even if when it's a bad movie, even if it's a bad movie and it's weird and it has a shitty storyline, bad plot, um, he actually makes the movie interesting. Yeah. By just being there, and he doesn't even have to do much. I saw this movie. Uh, it was a horror movie. It wasn't Mandy, although Mandy was interesting. Um, it was. Uh, this is. Forget the name of it. Hold on. It was. He played this janitor. Like he was just trying to get a job. He played this janitor. It was something about. Uh, you know, working at a. Uh, at some abandoned kind of a Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. Right? And then the, uh, you know those, those those animatronic animals? Yeah. Right? That saying and shit like that? Terrifying. Right. They're, ter <laughs> they're terrifying, right? So he, he, he works at this this place, and it's abandoned. It's like in the middle of nowhere out in the fucking desert somewhere. And um, the, these these things come to life, and uh, they murder people, right? So, uh, you know, there's some kids that are also stranded out there. And, you know, these animals come to life, these characters or whatever, these animatronic killing things. And uh, they kill some of the kids. But he plays this badass that has no lines in the whole movie. But he acts, he, he, I mean, his acting is great because yeah. he elevates the movie and you're just like, who is this character? He makes it interesting. And then he's the badass guy that doesn't say a word but takes all of them down somehow, some way. <laughs> like, he's just the silent, strong type. It's a crazy... What is it called? <laughs> I, I'm looking up the name for it. It was a weird, weird name. So well, while you're doing that, one of my favorite recent movies for from Cage is uh, Pig. Oh, yes. You told me about that. And I haven't seen it. Pig is really good. Uh, probably one of his better ones, honestly. I think, uh, you know, could have been up there for an Oscar for it, in my opinion. Yeah, at least in, in the nomination category. Yeah. Uh, where he is a someone who's turned into a recluse, uh -huh. uh, has moved off into the woods, and has this pig that helps him locate truffle mushrooms, like you know, truffles. Right, right. That's the thing. And the, the trouble trade apparently is, you know, as far as uh, there we go. This is the one. As far as uh, culinary world seems to be concerned, it's kind of like a drug trade where it's you know, it's yeah, so, what I hear. so valuable and so it's, you know, hey man, truffle, truffle fries <laughs> are pretty serious, man. So like in the movie Pig, he you know his, his pig gets stolen. And he goes on his mission to go find his fucking pig. <laughs> like he just, he's just, he's, he's just, uh, you know, he, he's a badass as a character, but in, in this world, he doesn't uh, devolve himself into that violence anymore. He just goes about this kind of like, it's very subtle, but you, right. know, you know, he's a badass. Yeah. But it's very, it's almost like you expect it to be a John Wick movie. It's just like, no, nope. it's not. He doesn't even <laughs> lift the finger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's very, it's, very good. It's very similar to this character. Yeah. It's so called Willy's Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland. Right? You see these characters? They're like evil Chuck E. Cheese guys. Um, yeah, man. And he's just a janitor. He gets paid there to like, literally, the, the guy tells him, this is the, 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 the deal. He's like, I will pay you to stay here for like a week or something. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, yeah, you see this? Yeah. It's freaking <laughs> ridiculous, man. It's over the top, of course. Yeah. No lines. No lines from at all. No, no, I mean, no, he's, from his character. From his character, yeah. right? That's what I'm saying. Like, it, it's it's crazy. I mean, yeah, he's the only one that makes it out alive. It's, just, it's over the top, <laughs> can't be movie. Right. But that's the thing about Nick Cage. Like, it's actually interesting. <laughs> it makes it interesting. If there was anyone else, it'd be a shit movie. It'd right. be like, what the hell is this? But he actually makes it interesting. So is he? I don't think he's ever bad, man. He's he's, so he's even he's, he's good. Yeah. He brings bad movies up. Yeah, but in that's some, the, like, some of his best movies, you know, you think about like, you're, like, you're looking at it, it's like, holy shit, this guy's got such a good range. Like, he's got a great range. 21 for uh, Leaving Las Vegas. Yeah. I mean, that, that yeah. movie's 
It's hard to watch sometimes. Yeah. You like? Yeah. Well, it's a little bit kind of. Well, it's is it, is it over the top or is it like it, you know? Unless you've been there and that's like, thankfully, I'm, I've never been like that much of an alcoholic where I've given that point. Where right. It's like, you know, I just want to like kill myself with alcohol. Yeah. But yeah. you know, I could, we, we can see yourself becoming that person. That's what I think is like. He played a very interesting it's very, character. It's, uh, that movie too is very surreal in a sense. It, it is. You know, it's it very is. you know surrealistic. And, uh, but shit, you want to Yeah, man. He can tap into dark craziness. Um, he can go there. Well, my favorite cage rolls is uh, him with the fry cook in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's right. That's right, he did play that. It yeah, was very yeah. brief. Very brief. Yeah, and yeah. That was actually uh, when he was Nicholas Coppola. That's right, because he's he in the Coppola family. He is uh, Francis Ford's nephew. Nephew, that's yeah. right. And he changed his name because he didn't want the Hollywood clout, yeah. unlike today's generation. I think, um, <laughs> so his cousin is Jason Schwartzman. That I heard that too. Who is the son of uh, Adrian from Rocky? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, uh, shit. <laughs> no, she's trying to train, train of thought. But in any case, um, all right. So the movie, right? Talia Shire. Okay. Yeah. That's Talia. That's, that's Adrian. Yeah. Right. So the unbearable weight of massive talent. So it's so good. Very meta. Yeah. Very, very meta because he plays official version of himself. Yes, yeah. by the same name, Nicholas Cage, with all the same movies. Well, it's a when I see Cage, and I see K. Yeah, that's right. It has a K on there. Yeah, N- 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 I mean Cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but it's interesting, and uh, Pedro Pascal plays an uh, interesting character too, man. Yeah, yeah. He so, plays the, the what they think is the bad guy. But actually right. is the bad guy. That's right. <laughs> Which it has a nice turn to it yeah. because hey, you know what? So the movie just seems like this kind of weird, over the top. I mean, that's how they sell it. This very weird, over the top type of uh, right. uh, of yeah. a film, and it's just very straightforward, and you know what you're getting, right? But then it has the plot is actually interesting. Yeah, it has it has layers, man. It does. It, yeah. It's actually pretty pretty well done because it, it's about an actor. Who's kind of over the hill? His career's going nowhere. He's taking bullshit role, roles, and it's like, yeah, okay, that's Nicholas Cage's he to, life. He wants to get out of that. He, he wants, wants to, to yeah. right, right. And then he's struggling with this existentialism. He's like, I'm quitting acting. That's it. I'm over. So he's a little suicidal. Then he has the uh, the uh, uh, the imaginary version of himself. Okay, yes, that's right. So who, who is based, he has an alter ego. He's based on uh, this interview that Nicolas Cage did, I think in like, I want to say like the 90s. Yeah, like I would say maybe, early maybe 90s. Maybe the 80s. Right. I don't think, you know. I'd say I'd early say 90s. 90s. Yeah, Nicky. You know, where he comes out on. on that's his alter ego, Nicky. It's a yeah. younger version. He goes on stage and he somersaults and he starts doing leg kicks and he's wearing a leather jacket. And weather, and yeah, no shirt, leather biker you know, jacket. No shirt underneath. And like that's the character you see as the younger version. That, right. And that that's who he was at the peak yeah. of his career. <laughs> that's when he was the shit. Yeah. You know, so he's actually having dialogue with that version of himself. So you got the old Nicolas Cage with like yeah. the dyed hair. <laughs> Which obviously, you can obviously see his died and shit, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know he's trying to get back to where he was at, at the peak of his career, and he's actually talking to that version of himself. Yeah. And that version of himself is a bit of a douche. He's kind of a chad. <laughs> he's kind of a chad, and he's talking all this bullshit, like you know, like yeah, you you know, you gotta be a fucking movie star. Like that, kind of, that kind of nonsense. But it's 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 cool, man. It's cool. It's cool to see that. Kind of internal dialogue. No, it was great. I love like I went soft for myself, and it was you know it was, I had a theater like almost to myself when I watched it. Yeah, it was, it was fucking great. It's you know yeah. well that's sad, man. Like you know it, it didn't get too much of the well, no, I went, traction. You know, I went on an off day. And it was a, okay. more of like local theater and stuff. So and, it was, but it's not talked about. Like you know it's not mass, it's not the mass it was, public yeah. doesn't know much about this. But it's, it's actually it came out around the same time as like. Uh, Top Gun, right? Yeah, so, it did. You know, so it's you're not going to compete with a billion. It's going to be, yeah, yeah, it's going to be underneath, and it's going to be. You know, they're not going to pay attention you know, to it. Nick Nicholas Cage is not going to like his career is not going to get hurt because it's. I don't think so. <laughs> no. I don't. This guy has it, massive, it, might, it might be massive talent. You no, know? it actually might uh, <laughs> propel it back back up to where it was, but you know, because he did remember National Treasure. Those were Disney films. Mm-hmm. They were nice family films, but they were still good. Yeah, well, yeah. the first one was. 
<laughs> yeah, the first one was all right. You know, it, it is what it is. Yeah, maybe it's like, like that. Still decoration. That could be that. It's a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It made me feel hopeful. Like, what's the secret going on? What's Illuminati? Like, yeah. <laughs> but this movie, uh, unbearable weight of massive talent. It's a nice, nice little surprise, man. It's very meta. It goes back. It's a celebration of Nicolas Cage and his. It is, and it's yeah. his weirdness. Yeah. His weirdness. There's no actor like him. And and then and then they make fun of the overacting that he does as well. <laughs> they poke fun at that. Well, remember they turn they turn that story in the movie into a movie at the end. They do. They're watching, they're watching it's that. super <laughs> meta. It's so weird, man. And, and but it's good because, like I said, you you don't know what to expect. You think it's going one way, and then it has these twists and turns. And then they add to them uh, where, he, where he has to like be the spy for a spy group. Right. Right, he has to be a spy for the spy group, right? And he's like he accidentally drugs himself for like. Oh, that was a good scene. Yeah. That was a funny scene. That's hack. That's good acting, man. <laughs> yeah. he, he made that work. Um, very good. Yeah, man. I gotta watch it again. It's good. I recommend that. It's out on Amazon. It's fantastic. It's, <laughs> it's a good it's on Prime. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, right. it's it's on Prime. It's on Prime. Uh, Pedro Pascal, of course, great actor. Uh, also did his thing in this movie. He makes. I mean, he is he, uh, the Mandalorian. He is the Mandalorian, <laughs> um, but uh, he, you know, he 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 adds to it too. He he works off of Nick Cage's character, yeah. and he makes uh, it's kind of hard not to like him, but he's like kind of the bad guy, you know. And then you see the 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 emotional struggle between Nick Cage and he's there to spy on him, but right. then yeah. he P Pedro Pascal actually actually gives Nick Cage hope. Because Nick Cage is like depressed and suicidal. He's like, no. You're the great actor. He's yeah. the best actor there is in the world. You need to do it for you're all the, of You're the reason why I want to be an actor. Right. He's like, he's like, you have to do it for all the human race. You can't retire. Like, he does this whole big spiel. And then Nick Cage is like, yeah. You know what? You're right. Yeah. He just feeds into it. So then he has to betray him. And, it's, you know, there's this whole dichotomy there. It's it's a good plot. It's a yeah. fun movie, man. I like it. I, I, I love it, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. Like about brought it up, that was actually like it was, it was kind of like baiting with Matt Murray. It's yeah, like, nah, I saw it and I was like, oh, I forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. Like, no, I saw it recently, so yeah. that's why I was I saw it on your list. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was fresh on my mind. I actually wanted to talk about it last time, but I never got around to it. Yeah, because it came out a while yeah. ago. It came out about maybe three weeks. I think ago. it came out like right before we did the last podcast. Right, yeah. right before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I wanted to talk about it. It was fresh on my mind, and uh, I had fun watching it. It was cool. All right, so uh, going on to future releases. Yeah, so the next on both of our lists here is uh, yeah. Thor: Love and Thunder, which is what we wanted. We wanted to talk about this last time, but you know we, yeah. we ran almost to like three hours. And That's right. Wrap it up. That's right. Uh, but this comes out in uh, you know in a week, a week and a half. Yeah. Right. July eighth. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll be in Paris, uh, and I'll be watching this in Paris. That's right. You yeah. are taking a trip. Yeah, I that's going to be awesome. A big trip to Paris. That's and, right. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to go see this in a pretty big theater. Yeah, you've got, you've got a plan already. I'll bring this up while we're talking about it. Uh, but, you know, uh, with this movie, I'm so excited to see it because yeah. not only is it you know, MCU and all that, uh, but it's Attack of Waititi, and I, I can't get enough of this guy. He does so uh, such great work with anything he really does. Right. Uh, whether it's what we do in the shadows, whether it's Thor, whether it's you know Star Wars coming out for him in the next couple I, of years. I trust the guy, man. Uh, yeah, that's right. He's doing Star Wars. So I can't even say the, the theater title, but it's a big theater. It's the Le Grand Rex. Let's just say that. <laughs> but it's, it's it's a huge like it's got like, it's got like it looks like a traditional. Um, oh, that's like. Uh, I'll, I'll put a picture on you know on here. Yeah, that looks like an, an actual kind of it's old three the, the opera house. Kind right, of it's got. Three layers, yeah, these it. tears, yeah. Uh, it does look like an yeah, opera. So I'm gonna go see it there, and uh, you know, awesome. You know, we'll see how the please do take the, pictures. How the French crowd reacts to these movies? Is it? Uh, I hear uh, differences in terms of uh, mm. audience reactions with American audiences and European Listen, audiences. You know? That is very true, and especially specifically uh, the French audience because yeah. they have a very very long history of very early films, man. Well, I mean, I mean, that's these where guys are the birth of. Same line as in Paris. I mean, I the, guess. Lumiere I mean, they're brothers, pioneers. The Mier brothers. They were certainly, yeah. certainly pioneers. That's for sure, man. So, yeah, that should be interesting. I want to see, I, I want to hear you talk about how the crowd uh, rates these type of films. 
<laughs> we'll see how the reactions go, and right. if I can find the the right feet of it, all the fresh right. stuff. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Right, so, so, what do you think about this? Yeah. So, I think it's going to be uh, interesting to see. You know, technically, what you do is saying it's not going to be quite like it was with Ragnarok in terms of the the look and feel of the movie. It's not going to be quite like the overt comedic style. Right. It's going to be a little more serious. It's going to be a little more... Uh, right, because it is a serious film. It is more of, yeah, it's finding, you know, you're, like, you're finding yourself uh, as a person, which is interesting because Thor is a 1,500-year-old person. Right. You know, it's like, this is his, not like, probably not even a midlife crisis, it's more like a quarter life crisis. Yeah, maybe somewhat. a third life crisis. Somewhat, you know? yeah. He, he's generally, well, he's been through a lot. He's done all these things. And now he's like, you know what? His I, parents are, have died. Yeah, he's like, his brother's yeah. dead. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. in a way, <laughs> in a way, he saw his brother die. He, well, as far as he knows, he doesn't know Loki's alive in a different realm. That's so, right. in know, another Loki, multiverse. Yeah, Loki's dead, one hundred percent. Right. So, so, yeah. so he's lost a lot, yeah. and it's the love of his life, and right, know, which is which she is coming back. Yeah, she's coming back as the you know, you know all you my, got, uh, Christian Bale as Voldemort. And absolutely, <laughs> absolutely not. Actually, this character is very interesting. I like this. Gore character. the God Butcher, right? Gore the God Butcher. This is actually, and so the movie is kind of. I mean, this is an actual series in a comic book. Yeah. Uh, you know the God Butcher uh, series. And it's actually pretty brutal, man. Like, this guy actually goes off and kills not just, you know, Norse mythology uh, gods, but, like, all gods of existence. And it's a pretty tight series. He's pretty powerful. Yeah, he has a very interesting backstory. Awesome, awesome backstory. Um, Funny enough, in the comic books, his weapon that gives him his power is called the All Black. Okay. And it's it's this uh, sword made out of uh, symbiont. And if you know, oh. right. And if you know really? anything in the comic books, the symbiont, the same same type of symbiont venom has. So are the, the symbionts like a race? They are a race. Uh-huh. And the, and that particular race has a god. And there's a god of the symbionts. So he channels that. So the god of the symbionts, uh, they call him the King in Black. Um, he, there, there's actually a storyline behind this as well, too. The god of the symbiotes, that was his sword. And he was battling another god. Okay. Right? And somehow, it, like, Gore had seen this, and um, the sword fell, and he grabbed the sword, and it became part of him. And I mean, there's a little bit more to the story. But he lost all faith in, in gods, basically. Because he used to be very, um, he used to be very devout, you know, believer, yeah. and uh, you know the guys never came to help him. You know, his family died. All his family died. His entire race died. He's the last of his kind. So he was just kind of out there, left to die in the wilderness. And kept, okay. you know, his entire culture was based on religion and believing that, you know, leaving it off to faith and mm-hmm. leaving it up to the God. So it cut, it gets down to the point where he just becomes a heretic, and he's just like, this is all bullshit, and he loses faith and everything, and he just kind of renounces all worship of, uh, of gods. And while he's doing this, he sees two gods fighting, and that just further confirms, you know, the two gods are fighting and they're causing destruction around them. So that just further confirms that they don't care about any of the destruction that they do. Like, we're nothing to them. Right. So in this whole fight, the, the, the sword, all black, lands, and uh, he picks it up and it becomes part of him. And now he has this amazing godlike power that he got and then he uses that and he just goes off on the fucking rampage and starts decapitating gods it's it's pretty badass it's a pretty badass uh comic book man right. yeah yeah so that's the character christian bale's playing let's look at his fucking crazy face <laughs> yeah. see that there so that, yeah. yeah so that's the character that he's playing picture and uh yeah <laughs> so the picture there and um yeah it's it's following i mean some of the shots here are just right out of some of the comic book uh, pages um yeah man so it's 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 interesting it was a good series mm-hmm. so it's interesting to see that and you know they include like you know great gods so uh, go back there yeah uh, so that little that huge monster that's a guy that's a guy that's a guy no so yeah it's a trailer where uh a Korg and Thor are overlooking the snow of this huge creature. Right, this is giant creature, and that creature, Thor knew that creature, um, and they they would 
They would meet battle. each other in passing. No, they wouldn't battle. They just knew each other. They were very friendly. So this is probably a moment where he's like realizing that someone's going around and killing these guys. Right. And there were moments like that. It's kind of like a little detective story. So he sees, okay. he, you know, he's going across the cosmos and he's encountering bodies of <laughs> gods. Like, what the hell and he's like, on? what is going on? Who's yeah. taking out? Like the, when he sees that massive creature, he's like, well, something serious is happening if, yeah. they, if they took this guy out. Yeah. Like, you know, because he knew him. So, you know, it becomes that whole thing, and he's like, well, I, I need to go and find out who's going. So where do you think the uh, the Guardians come into play here? I don't know, because the Guardians really didn't come into play in the in the comic book. But we know so. that, that Thor is also supposed to be the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Right. Which is supposed to come out, I think, next year or later this year? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, obviously, that, that timeline is after this movie. It has to be, right? It has to be, yeah. Yeah. So I wonder what that what, what that entails. Do you think the Guardians kind of like just let, like let Thor do his thing for this movie? I don't and know how much time they have in this movie. Yeah, you know, like it's possible. It I, looks to me like where they they're they're living off of Endgame, and then you know they're kind of like okay, Thor, do your thing. Right. They kind of right, and then they kind of we'll separate see you guys later. Right. Yeah, I think that we don't want any part of this. You know, Right. And that's and that's yeah. cool. And that's I guess that's a nice tie-in. Or maybe maybe I don't think they have a, as I don't think they play a role in the the end game of this movie. No, I, I don't think it. so. I think they kind of like take off for a bit. I, yeah, and then he links up with them again later. Right, right. I don't think they have a massive massive role in this yeah. film. I think there's just you know just so you, a little you, bit using that for the trailer and the hype. But yeah, of course. I think they're in it for a little bit just to help them and just to tie well, no, he it. does he does go off for the galaxy the Guardians of the Galaxy for uh volume three. Right. So, right. Um, well they 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 yeah they need as far as we know, that's that's the last movie that we have of uh, Chris Hemsworth as Thor. Yeah. And, and that's right. He's in a, and he, he wants to take a break as well. Well it's not for conflicting stories. So I've yeah. I've read that he would be open to playing him if the fans wanted to play. Mm. Well, I mean the fans are always gonna want to Right. So I think uh, <laughs> like there's Indication that he wants to play it. Um, I don't think it's quite like a you know like an RD, RDJ type scenario where he just wants to be done with it. I think it sounds it sounds like he just wants to ha have the proper story or something. Listen, these it's, guys have been doing it for what, yeah. almost twelve years now. Uh, yeah, 12, 13 sure years. Thor, like this is the only one that, that's getting his fourth movie. Right. The only thing. Uh, Iron Man had three. Had three movies. Uh, right. Yeah. Cap Captain America will have four, but it won't be uh, Chris Evans. It'll be you know. Right. Three for Chris Evans and then uh, Henry Yeah, I mean people are getting tired, you know? Like it's 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 yeah. it's gonna happen, you know. Chris but Evans Thor, is Thor tired. as as a as a god who's been around for so many thousand like a thousand they, years. they can he, he could be that, that grandfather in for new Right. Stories, they can they you know? can still kind of, you know, stretch that out a little bit more with his character. He could be the sage of the uh the new be. heroes. He sticks, yeah, I think yeah. I think he should stick around. Why not? You know, welcome in the new Avengers, little, which is actually you know, a thing, you know, in the comic books. Well, I think, I think they're going to go for this young Avenger type deal. They too. should. Yeah. With Ironheart, uh, that's that's already... So, I think uh, Kevin Feige came out recently and said that the, uh, the, the main objective for the main villain of Phase 4 is going to reveal himself pretty soon. Okay. Like within this, within the next half of the year. So, all right. So, now that we're talking about the upcoming stuff, the yeah. future stuff, right? I think that's actually pretty cool. And, I mean, everyone knows it's going to be Kang. Kang the Conqueror. Right. Which is uh, Jonathan Majors. Right. Right? Because you saw that kind But of is he going to be the main villain or is he, he has to be. segue? He has to be. He has to be. Because uh, is he, uh, a lot of the people out there think it's going to be a Secret Wars type deal. It is going to be Secret Wars. Yeah. Is that the ultimate story? I think ult it can be. Yeah. Because it all kind of ties in together. Okay. To be honest. In a way. In a way. Um, of course, Secret Wars has to do with the Beyonder. And of course, the comic book has to know who the Beyonder is. Secret Wars is an incursion, right? So, well, so like yeah, we talked. We already got the incursion we word drop that. with uh, we spoke about that. and, and uh, Doctor Strange set that up, yeah, which is fantastic, and that's essentially what's going to happen. Okay, they're leading up to this new phase in the MCU, <laughs> and it's all going to lead up to the Secret Wars, and the Secret Wars is going to open up to a whole bunch of shit because in the Secret Wars, that's where um, Spider-Man originally got his uh, start. In, in the, no, no, he got his Venom. Uh, oh, the black suit. Oh, yeah, th that's when he actually got the symbiote, because Secret Wars is an incursion, and it's a pocket universe, and there's a planet in this universe called Battle World. Uh, sounds weird. Um, but this is where two universes are battling each other to essentially see which one the winner is, and this is all orchestrated by the Beyond. Sounds, sounds like Dragon Ball Super. 
<laughs> yeah, it's similar. It's similar, man. You know, gods of destruction. Which is actually a really good series. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's all orchestrated by this outside being called the Beyond. Okay. Essentially, he is Marvel's god in a way. He lives outside kind of, like of a, any other universe. Like a Galactus ordeal? No, he's way beyond that. Okay. I mean, beyond Galactus, it. yeah. <laughs> the beyond it. That's. He's, Beyond it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> beyond it, man. He's honestly like, he's just God, God. You okay. know, he's like, you know, this like is more gal- than celestial. Gal- this this will be Galactus. More than celestial. More than that. Okay. Yeah, like out, outside of the universe. So, but the idea like is. Creator that, of the universe. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this is kind of all the games here. Um, but yeah, Secret Wars is awesome. If they do do it, I'm interested in seeing what their version of the Secret Wars is. I have an idea. I think that they are, this is where Marvel can get away with mixing in all the other properties like X Men. Um, well, that's totally killing. Fantastic Four and all these other missing properties that they've sold off. I think this is a way for them to consolidate. Do you think like, Deadpool's going to play a role in this? Yeah, I think yeah. all of the, yeah. X-Men. I, yeah, because that's essentially what the Secret Wars is about. It's about universes. It's, a, it's a, a bigger, way bigger crossover than, than it's supposed to be. The war was. It's supposed to be. That's the whole point. It's to, okay, to bring in all of these other yes. properties. So Kevin Kevin Feige basically said that like, yeah, this is gonna. You're like, don't worry, it's all gonna reveal itself very soon. Right. Like, now, a way to tie this in perfectly would be Kang. Okay. Because Kang is that. Well, Kang obviously has more. He's that more. He's go. powerful. Like he was a big part of Loki, and yeah, he has, he's a he's a pretty badass. No, villain. that's the last place we saw him. He hasn't popped up since. Right. So so it's it's he's gonna start popping up everywhere. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> so, that's the that's whole the reason for that that version of that character was he was trying to prevent from all those other versions of himself from interfering. In, and there's in, one particular very bad <laughs> version of himself, like the <laughs> ultimate evil version of himself, yeah. which. You know, with all his knowledge and technology, takes advantage of all of it. Right. And he not can only travel through time, but travel through multiverses right. as well. So it's, it, yeah, he's just way, well, way too far. That's, that's what the king and Loki can do too. Right? He can, yeah. He's like a man beyond the world, so whatever. Yeah, man. Uh, Kang is very, he's no joke. He's a, he's a big antagonist to the Avengers, to the Fantastic Four. Okay. So yeah, man, it's he ties in a lot of things. So I think the smart move for Kevin Feige is to use him. Um, well, obviously, he has within the he Secret more, Wars. You know, Jonathan John Majors, right? Yeah, Jonathan yeah. Majors, uh, great actor. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. I, I first saw him in uh, Black Black Man in San Francisco. He's yeah, so good in that. Movie. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic uh, film. So when I saw him in, in Loki. I was like, yeah, no, I'm sure no he also but, did this HBO uh, miniseries. It's called. Uh, uh, was it uh, Lovecraft? Uh, Lovecraft Country. Oh, it was like is that that's a kind of like a is that an HP Lovecraft kind of a thing? Somewhat. It's it's inspired uh, okay. by HP Cre- Lovecraft. Creative inspiration. Creative inspiration. Yeah. Very loosely inspired, but it is a very deep, okay. in its own right, a very deep uh, series. I suggest you should watch it. It's on HP. It's okay. awesome. So you know Lovecraft. I, I thought. Uh, Multiverse of Madness was going to be a more of a Lovecraftian type of a, that would have been great because the whole title of it is the Multiverse of Madness, which is the Mountains, the Mountains of Madness. Mountains of Madness which is, I, mean, I thought the same thing. Uh, very missed opportunity. Very, no yeah. man, and it wasn't as far. It, it didn't have enough horror elements as I would like it to be. Yeah. Uh, they disnified it too much to me. For me, um, I mean, it, it, you know, it did have its. Moments where they killed off a ton of people, but you know, it needed to be a little bit more than that. It wasn't quite like what people thought it was going to be, which was uh, kind of like a No Way Home deal where you had all these characters that are, um, yeah, you know, you had like these moments like, okay, here, here's this alternate, but you didn't have like the, the, the power of seeing Toby Maguire, Andrew Garfield, or you know. Yeah, it had its nice little cameos. It was like, here's these cameos now and then. Yeah, that was, that <laughs> it, was, it was just simple okay. fan oh, service. Speaking of that, some news came out that, uh, sorry fans, but John Krasinski is not going to reprise his role as Mr. Fantastic. I doubt that. That's basically... Uh, I doubt that. Taking it. No, that's... Okay. Yeah. Um, I doubt that. I doubt that... Uh, first of all, he played, he played a good part. Yeah, so basically, um, he played a good part, and Funny um, Funny came out and said that we did this because it was just total fan service because fans were like wanting 
Krasinski to be Mr. Fantastic. I think they're bullshitting. I think they're actually bullshitting. Do you think Krasinski's going to reprise this of course. Mr. Fantastic? Why not? Who else, who else are they going to get? First off, first off, I think why replace it? That's, that's number it. one. That's number maybe, one. Maybe they're testing these waters with this release. That's what I heard, but I think that's bullshit. Nothing with this this news. You know, maybe they're testing the waters with reaction. Of like, you know, it's possible. Like, hey, Krasinski's not going to play him again. Be like, oh, what the hell? Rubble, rubble, rubble. And like, <laughs> <laughs> um, this is what I'll say. Um, I think the choice of him, th this is the real issue here. Yeah. The choice of him being cast as Mr. Fantastic, right? I think, was perfectly sound because he played a good part. But that's where, now, the, that's where fan casting now my, my play issue, very well. Well, hold on, hold on. Works. My issue is this. Yeah. Whether or not he was utilized to, no, he wasn't utilized to, to, at all. to his yeah. fullest potential is a whole different The story. smartest man is going to give up the most powerful guy in the room. Right. Like, so this, hey, is, this guy's power is his mouth. So, By the way, so <laughs> this is my issue. So this is my issue. It's not about his casting, right? It's yeah. more about how he was used. And that has more to do with the writing. Because he didn't choose those words that were written for him. You know, the writer did. And the director told him to say these words. And the producer co-signed on this and said it was okay. Which means that Kevin Feige gave the thumbs up on how he was going to be used. So, moral of the story is, he wasn't badly casted. He didn't do a bad job as an actor. I think he's a great actor. I think he did great as Reed Richards. I think he should continue to be Reed Richards. The, th the only problem was is that what the director and the producer and the writer ended up doing with that particular character. They wanted him to die. I, honestly, um, in my opinion, I think that when uh, the Scarlet Witch broke into the Illuminati's uh, headquarters, I think there should have been more of a fight. There should have been. I think that that should have been written a lot more differently and that they should have, those guys should have put up a lot more of a fight than, than anybody else. There's no way she's going to come in there and wipe the floor with them. I mean, technically she can't. But that wouldn't have been fun. At least have a little bit of fun with it. Yeah. At least show Mr. Fantastic doing his stretchy shit and being creative with it. Or at least show um, Black Bolt using his voice a little bit before she figured out, oh, I need to wipe his mouth off. Um, yeah, man, that's my opinion. Uh, they should have put up more of a fight, especially Professor X. I mean, you have, you have all these heroes, man, you know, they, they, could, they could have washed her up. Honestly, they could have washed her up. They could have given her a, a decent fight. You know, and, and with Doctor Strange. Like, all three... Listen, I mean, if all of them... It, she's not Thanos, man. I mean, she, I mean, she is Omega level. I'm not going to lie. Okay. But her par, her par level like, went up way more than we're used to. Yeah, and, man. It's just... You know? It's a little unfair. They should have had more fun with it. I understand. He's, like, he's like, here's Black Bolt. His power is his mouth. And she's like, oh, yeah, well, he doesn't have a mouth anymore. Thanks for telling me, smartest man. He should, like, he should have known that. That's yeah, bad writing. Yeah. That's bad writing. And but that's, that's not John Krasinski's fault. No, it's not. I'm not saying that. But, yeah. you know, the whole, whole aspect of, like, putting up a better fight, it's like... Um, they should have. You know, I think also this is, like, Disney's kind of afraid to utilize this R-rated uh, type of environment that they've not only been ex exposed to, but I've, been, I've come into ownership of with, like, Deadpool. Right. It's like, you, you know, you're going to make money on this R-rated shit, whether it's a PG-13-ish R, right. you know, up the ante a little bit. Give us more than just your, your tearing robots' heads off. Put some humans in that, that, that scenario. Right, yeah, you yes, know? yeah. You're right. You're, you're right, mean, because it just makes it too easy. It's just, yeah. and you know, like, And, like, they're sitting on, like, like you can, yeah, like, you're you all can sitting see. on a council. It's like, oh, well, that's not happening. It's like, you should know that someone's in your building. Right. Like, tearing shit up. Yeah, man. You know? it's, yeah, that's to me that scene is just bad writing. I did, I, I did like though the Professor X, you know, coming in with the that was cool. But yeah, yeah still, was just like the how the hell does Professor X get outsmarted by by one? I don't. Yeah, I, I don't buy it. Being in the brain, that, I don't. That's, that's his. That's, that's his realm. Supposed, yeah, you know, that's his realm. He's supposed to be one of the most powerful mutants ever, especially with yeah. the mind, because yeah. that's what he does. He rehabilitates she, the she mind. Just, she just like overpowers it. Like, no, no, yeah. no, uh, no, man, no, I don't buy it. Um, they made, they made it more they, like she's obviously a very powerful mutant, especially in the comics. Like, but they, they overdid it, they overdid it in a sense. It's like they jumped too fast, 
was too much. Yeah, it was where way, she's, way too much. Where she's going from like can't even like, overpower Thanos to like boom, just destroying him. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a bit much. And I mean, no, no, but not, not necessarily because you know there's the Wanda Vision that's in between that, and then her getting the, the dark hold, the book, which is in between that as well. So she does change somewhat. That's a little bit of a journey. So I give them that. I give them that. That little series gave her, her that bit of a buffer. But uh, still, I do agree that uh, they kind of overdid it. They, that scene where she comes into the Illuminati headquarters, there should have been a fight. I should have seen more fantastic shit with Mr. Fantastic. Uh, Black Bolt should have gotten a chance. What the fuck, man? <laughs> like, everyone should have gotten a chance. There should have been a fight. And not only that, but they all went at her one by one, one at a time. Who does that? Yeah. No, if they all go at her at the same time, she would have been overwhelmed and they would have washed her up. Yeah. Especially if they would have let uh, 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 Strange loose. Yeah. You know, because any, listen, it's smart. Listen, Reed Richards is a smart guy. He would have done the real Reed Richards, the real one. <laughs> you don't know. But, but uh, you know, Reed Richards in the comic would have would have been smart enough to say, all right, we've got an intruder in here. She's a big threat. We're all going to go at her at the same time. Strange, let's get those cuffs off. Let's make shit happen. That would have been a smart move. He would have won. He, he almost had it like, taken care of by himself later in the movie with the whole, at the, uh, the temple and all that. Right, at the end. Yeah, Putting that's right. In an air dimension. You know, that's right. He almost did. I mean, Strange is smart. By himself. Strange is, Strange is pretty smart. But, but yeah. If, if we get these like big characters, get these introductions, it's like, oh, you're dead. Yeah, it's, it's kind sick. of unfair, man. That sucked. I mean, it's it's fan service, but then it was just like a stab in the back at the same time. Damn you, Raimi. <laughs> Damn you, man. All right. So uh, next on mine is what do you got? Stranger Things. Stranger Things season four, volume two. Okay. Um, we talked about this probably enough last podcast, but I just wanted to, to bring it up because it's uh, two days away. Right. Uh, as of us filming this right now, it's, this is uh, Wednesday, it comes out Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of like the event of the year. I mean, it's you it know, is. really, it's, it's been like, a lot of uh, anticipation. It's been three years since we had the last season and we got this. Yeah. this, and, this spark. and this last season was actually freaking great, man. Yeah, like I said, the last, story last time. podcast, I was thinking, right, like, talking about I was it. like, how are they going to like, uh, how is this going to be relevant anymore? Yeah, like you know, it, I thought it was gonna lose its relevancy, and then this the first part came out, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> it's like, no, oh my god, no, they didn't. No, they even and they, they, they uh, even got even bigger. And they were smart to do this first part. You know, I don't think it was actually the plan in the beginning. Yeah, uh, I think it was. They needed more time. Yeah, they needed more time. They're like, you know what? Let's let's give them what we got now, right? And then we'll we'll figure this out. And, Take a pause. You know. Finish some editing, yeah, and some uh, you know special yeah, effects. These, these last two episodes are like movies, and they you know, are actually that. bigger than movies. You know, they are movies. Yeah, you can have an hour and a half of a movie, but these, these the first episode dates like almost two hours. Long. Yeah, the, la- the nine, last ones nine, were nine is like two and a half hours. Yeah, the last stuff, were, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, with these new trailers that came out, it's like holy crap, you know, it's gonna be huge. Well, they worked. They, yeah, they 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 managed to uh, work the story up to this. Amazing climax, yeah. and then you, and then it's the, the penultimate climax because season five is still gonna come out. Right. So we're gonna get the big, the like we're gonna. Well, where are they gonna go we're, from well, there? The, the, the mind flare has to come back. The mind flare is the oh, it has to be uh, tied to whoever. Like, so whether, it's, whether, not whether, Vecna, whether, it's not Vecna. It's not Vecna. The ultimate bad. No, remember in uh, you know in the beginning they you know it's always put into D and D terms, right? Right. So uh, Dustin's like. Yeah, so the Demogorgons, they're like the foot soldiers, and then Vecna's like the general, but my player is like the, you know. Is he? Yeah. But they took him out. No, they didn't. He got pushed away. He's back in there somewhere. The my player has not been dealt with. Right. And then if you see the new trailer, we get this little moment where we see this like shadow creature yeah. in like a, a locked case in the Russian uh, stronghold. Yeah. So I don't know what that's about, but it yeah, has to be tied right. to something. Yeah, that's you know? right. I did see so, that. So like we, we know that Vecna uh doesn't he's not he can't be the, the main bad because he got pushed into a realm that already existed. Right. By So there has to be other creatures it that are already been, you know, older older it, than his, him. His being got corrupted by that realm. Right. You know, so it has okay. to be something Fair out enough. there. Fair enough. And I think that you know, we're gonna find out what that is. Yeah. And and Vecna's like 
whether he escapes or doesn't die or he does die, you know, I think it's going to lead to, let's say he doesn't die. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's pretty powerful. Yeah. I think the, the, the reveal of his backstory and the way they set that up was actually pretty ingenious. It really, it really is because it, it, it uh, expanded. It is full circle. It expanded so much about what we, we didn't know we wanted. Right. Because like we, we were so like, oh yeah, it's just it's upside down, and that's just how it works. And then we're right. like, oh wow, there's no. way there's a lot more to this than we thought. Yeah. And now we're like, holy shit, like where does eleven tie to this? Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But yeah. I think in the beginning we, we didn't know that she was the one that actually opened up this portal. Right. In the beginning. Yeah. We were like, oh, just, they were just experimenting, and they opened it up. You know, it was, it was her. It was, was her that did that. Through that. Right. You know. And then ever since they've been trying to get and that. And her powers <laughs> are very similar to his. Right. You know. And it's 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 very interesting to see where this goes. Um, mm. I'm very uh, excited for it. I'm also very nervous <laughs> because you know some of my favorite characters seem to be on the on the chopping block. They might be. You know, uh, don't Eddie, touch Eddie. Don't don't do it. There's gonna be a riot. It's <laughs> gonna be a riot if uh, if you guys touch. Any guys be riot. Listen, yeah, yeah. That's that's that. I think that's a you general. Know, and consensus. also, don't don't touch Steve. Mr. Harrington. Yeah. Do <laughs> you like he, Steve now? He's, I've always he's been, redeemed himself. Uh, since season, you remember since season one? Yeah, but season, season one, he was the bad guy. Season two, he was, you know. You know yeah, and then, yeah, and then he, he became the, the, he became the mom of the group. He is. He kind of did. He kind of did. <laughs> kinda did. <laughs> okay. It's like, don't touch Fair my enough. kids. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, you know, that dichotomy with all those characters and stuff. It's like, you know, take them all, but not, not those two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take Will and his bad haircut. Yeah. Right well, every, everyone <laughs> can relate to Eddie, man. Like, Eddie was a nice. Well, I don't think, maybe not everyone, but like those of us who have been. There's in a lot of situations. people. Right, right. There's a lot where, of people. Where the nerd him becomes like the uh, overpowering factor. You know? he's, he's not just the nerd, man. He's just like this uh, kind of a black sheep. I call, I call him a, a, a fringe nerd punk. That's him. Yeah. That's him. Those people that just weren't part of and the, like Especially like in the 80s. The cool like, kids. Like, those kind of guys who were like, you know, back then it was not okay to be a canary. It was not like mainstream. No, it wasn't. You know, but, but he's like, you know, he's like, owned he's it. like fuck you. Yeah, it's like oh, that's it. what I am. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? It is what it is. Yeah, hellfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. No, I like it. Yeah. I like. Also, like he shreds. Like you know, he's like yeah, he's true. a metalhead. Yeah, like, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a cool dude. Yeah, you know, uh, I like his character. Uh, so, but some of the uh, cast have. This, these last two episodes to be a bloodbath, yeah, and that we're going to be uh, losing. Well, we're going to lose some. We're going to lose some people, yeah, especially dealing with Becca. And not not just one, like it was other seasons, like we just have one death. But this is going to be a, like several, you know? yeah. Well, they they tricked us because they, you know, in the last season we thought Hopper died. Well, well, that was we, we that had, was uh, sad. But uh, Bob, remember, uh, uh, Samwise Samwise Gamgee, he died. Oh, yeah. Was that season two or three? That's right. No, that was season two. That was season two. So we thought uh, Hopper died. Oh, man, I like yeah. Bob, man. Yeah. Yeah, Bob, I remember he, that. He sacrificed yeah. himself. He did. He went out bad, a badass. Yeah, he yeah. did. I remember that. He saved that. those kids. Yeah, yeah, he was just like this perfect guy. Oh, man, I remember yeah. Bob. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but yeah, no, we <laughs> thought Hopper died, and it was the same situation. Yeah. It was the same situation where you saw this guy sacrificed everything. He's like, hey, man. I'm out. I remember that yeah, last, like that last shot. He was just like, we knew. "You can't say, you we can't knew. save me." We knew. <laughs> no, I no, I thought that was it. I knew, I I knew right away. I honestly thought that was it. I was like, "Okay, that makes sense. It's sad, but you're gonna, uh, you know, uh, George R. R. Martin us." So, uh, <laughs> so also like we were talking about like earlier with the Netflix stuff and then holding on to things. Right. Uh, I gotta give it up to the Dumb Brothers. Be like, you know what? This is we're done at this point. Yeah, we're not gonna go. Uh, we I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested in seeing where they go from here because these these guys. Say the two five is it? No, no. I, I mean, uh, I'm talking about their career okay, uh, as far yeah. as like what their next project yeah. will be. I think they. I think I read that they have some stuff lined up. I, I, uh, they've done. I'm a yeah. fan of these guys. They've done such great work with this original content that they've created, and it's inspired heavily inspired by Stephen King, obviously, because you see little hints of that all over the place. Um, and they're just, I can tell they're horror and, and you know, horror, definitely horror heads and, and film heads as well. But, yeah. um, yeah, man, I want to see what their next project is because they've done such a great job oh, with this. See, check this out. So, uh, after 
just trigger things, they're going to uh, direct a Stephen King adaptation. I'm not surprised. <laughs> is that is that surprising to you? That's not at all. Yeah. And I hope. Yeah. God, I hope it's the Dark Tower. That be good. Cause didn't they just try to do that recently? It was off the uh, Idris Elba. It was, it was shit. I'm gonna try to pretend like it didn't exist. And those who know about the Dark Tower and have read the books and the comic books know exactly what I'm talking about. It is too big to 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 mishandle. Yeah. It's it's one of the best. Written things, man. Like it's, it's like a Dune thing. thing, right? Where it's just so large, it's, it's massive. massive. It's ma You can't. You, you have to do it properly. So I, I didn't realize until I was watching uh, Umbrella Academy. Yeah. Uh, earlier, because I'm trying to catch up on that. I was I was hoping to talk about that in this podcast. Yeah. I was a noob that I'm you know, lazy. And I'm just, <laughs> maybe it's a bit Shit, but uh, <laughs> they they talk about how uh, this character that he's just in the sixties. Like, yeah, my favorite book's Dune. I'm like, when the hell did that come out? It's like 1965. I'm like, holy yeah. crap! Yeah, in the 60s. Frank Herbert wrote that in 65. Crazy, right? Yeah. 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 Before well, Star Wars, probably, probably wrote that years before because he takes a while to write a damn book. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, before Star Wars, and before it's Star Trek, it's it's insane. Yeah. The the concept of it yeah. is pretty fucking wild. Yeah, that so. he thought of that in and that, that time. Huge backstory. And Dude, that, it's it's yeah. wild. They didn't have that type of <laughs> how how like they didn't yeah. even have that technology. But well, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's not even like. Uh, one of those things where it's so far fetched and it's not realistic. It's like, wow, it's actually kind of like it's very realistic. Yeah. It absolutely it's, is. Yeah. It's like science reality. <laughs> so, so a little. All right. So, getting back to Stranger Things. Listen. So, I hope the Duffer Duffer Brothers do. If they're working on Steve, I mean, it just makes sense because they look heavily heavily inspired by Stephen King. Yeah. Um, I hope that they do do a Stephen King adaptation, and I hope to God it is the Dark Tower. Um, Fantastic story. I recommend you get the comic book um, if, if you can't handle the, the books because the books have a lot, a lot of uh, information. It is Stephen King's magnum opus, basically. Okay. He started writing it when he was 20. Okay. And uh, he was heavily inspired by Tolkien. Okay. So he wanted to create a his own world, very similar to how Tolkien created yeah. his world, like the, the world building kind of thing. Yeah. But of course, his version of it and the things that mattered to him and how he was inspired. And uh, it's it's I think a lot of people it might see it might not seem like a big deal now because we've been inundated inundated by it. Mm -hmm. But he he was actually the first to introduce the multiverse. Okay. Into, uh, I think, like literary media. Okay. That's what the Dark Tower is essentially is. Okay. Um, and when, if you do get to read it, you'll appreciate it. But now it, it's it's not as special. The idea isn't as special. Yeah. Because I think that all of these other movies that have come out talking about the multiverse, I think, were somewhat inspired a little bit by the Dark Tower. It's really that good. Um, so he started off with this, and just a little backstory. Stephen King started off writing this um, as the first story that he wanted to write, and he knew that it was going to be a very long and big story. So what he did was he would start to write on it, he would start to write a little bit of it, and then in between he would write a novel. So he would write Carrie, and then he'd go back and write The Dark Tower, and then he'd write It. And he'd go back to write The Dark Tower, and then he'd write Pet Cemetery. And he'd write, you know, like he would yeah. go back and forth. And then what you find is that the Dark Tower links all of his novels. Like okay. his novels, the standalone, they don't connect. But the Dark Tower, the story itself, connects all, all of his books ever that he's ever written. So Pet Cemetery, It, um, uh, The Shining. Um, Carrie, uh, you know, the, the, the car that turns on by itself, I forgot the Christine. name. Christine. Christine, that one. Um, all of these, all of these movies, all these crazy things, The Mist, uh, Sleepwalkers, all this shit. Yeah. Everything makes sense when you read The Dark Tower because it's, it's part of this bigger multiverse and it's all, it's all there. It's this weird cosmic multiversal interdimensional weird thing. And then you... You get into it, and you're like, he wrote this in the fucking 80s, like the early 80s? Like, what? What kind of mushrooms was he doing? Like, he must have had some good acid or something. Like, that kind of shit. Um, so it's very, very, very interesting. I, re I definitely recommend it. It will give you a 
you know, some good insight, especially with all this multiverse thing happening. The upside down, yeah, instantly. Yeah. The upside down. When I first saw it, I was like, oh wait, that's Dark Tower shit. Like immediately, <laughs> like those who know yeah, know. Little Caprio. Yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> like those who know, if you know, you know. Like you start to notice these these freaking things. Right. It's just sad that the the characters, Roland, Roland the gunslinger, very important character in the Dark Tower. Um, you know. Uh, yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it, but yes, it all comes from Stephen King, and I hope the Duffer Brothers get to work on that. That's what, that's good. All right. So we got on your last one here. Okay, so there's this trailer. Um, I was trying to get some more information about it, but I don't know that much about it, but I do know that it's a little bit of a kind of a Wes Anderson type of uh, uh, type of a movie. Um, you know, so it's called See, See How They Run. Uh, has a great ensemble of characters. Tons of them. Um... Let's see, uh, Sam Rockwell is the lead on this. Okay. Yeah, um, I, like, I like Rockwell. Yeah. 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 So it has a bunch of people. Let's see here. Adrian Brody. Oh, Brody's so good. Um, He's kind of been some of these like, last several years. But yeah, he's know. been kind of... But he, he pops here, in here and there with the project. He shows up. Yeah, every yeah. now and then. Yeah, he's been he's been kind of very low-key for the yeah. past couple of years. I, uh, I just watched uh, Midnight in Paris. Yeah, you know, like I was talking about that. Yeah, like, so he's in it. He, he plays Salvador Dali. Oh, that's fine. Well, he, does, <laughs> he does kind of do. He has he that face. He keeps talking about the rhinoceros. <laughs> he, he does have that face. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, but Sauri's uh, Ronan, um, you know, the original Hannah. Um, she's been in a ton of films. But yeah. she's in it as well. David O'Yellow. Um, yeah, man. There's, there's, you know, there's a nice little ensemble cast. It's kind of like, a, you ever seen Knives Out? No. Yeah, yeah, you can see that. yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. It's kind of like a whodunit, kind yeah. of a clue right. yeah. type of a I, film. I that, that kind of just, right, know. right. So it's it's definitely like that. Um, you know, and it looks like a fun movie. I like those type of movies. Uh, it takes place in the nineteen forties. Uh let me take a look here at this director. Tom, Tom George. George, not a familiar name that I know of. Uh yeah, yeah I don't know. Done a couple of uh, indies. He's done like two indies before he did this one. So this might be uh, his big, big, big project for him coming up. Yeah. Yeah. This this might be his big What's break. What's the uh, studio? Do we know? Uh, I don't know. Let me take a look here. Let's see if I can. So what's it called? Uh, see how they rise. See how they. Rise. Oh, searchlight. Searchlight. Huh? All right. So we've got searchlight pictures. Yeah. Okay. They don't. They don't. I haven't seen much of them. Well, yeah, and it's coming out September 9th, uh, right around my birthday. Okay, so coming out this year. Yep, coming out this year. So, yeah. So it looks like a nice little whodunit uh, with a bunch of theater actors in it. Um, looks like a fun film. I like these kind of films. And those, you know, those people that have seen, like, Knives Out. It seems uh, like more of a, like, a, like, I like those fast-paced kind of things. Yeah, and it's a quirky, you know, kind of like a it's mystery fun. With yeah. a detective. It's yeah. yeah, it's a nice little uh, detective yeah. thing, nice little detective yeah, story. Yeah, where each it's not like a really a main character, but each character has right. an, like equal uh, in, like uh, influence into right. it. Right, and I and I kind of like that. These are the type of these are these are popcorn movies. You know, these yeah. are the type of movies that you go on a date on, and you're sitting there with your girlfriend, yeah, you're, trying, yeah, yeah. you're trying to figure it out. Like, who do you think did it? Like, oh, I think this guy did it. He's a, yeah, he's a little shady. So it's one of those kind of fun little films, you know. Um, and it's kind of like a mix between, you know, a Wes Anderson film like uh, Grand Budapest and, uh, you know, Knives Out. I think it's a combination of those. Okay, two. I like that. So, but yeah, it looks interesting. You just saw the trailer for it. And um, yeah, it kind of looks fun. Sweet. So, yeah. And I think that wraps it up yeah. for us. So I think in the, in the next podcast, we want to definitely bring up uh, the new Game of Thrones prequel that's coming out. That's right. Uh, we'll talk about that. And the, also uh, another uh, prequel. Ring of, Ring of Power. The Rings Ring of, of Power. With Amazon. That's right. Out. And then uh, a lot of news coming out about the Hunger Games prequel. Uh, yeah. Uh, Songbirds. Yeah. Yeah. So that should be interesting. Yeah. I actually just watched all the uh, Hunger Games recently. I was <laughs> pleasantly surprised. You've like, never seen these much, before. I saw the first one, but then I watched them all. I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm missing out. Those actually right. those are fun. They, like, those yeah. were, they, they yeah. weren't bad. They weren't that bad. I'm like, all right, right. Jay Law, I see. You know? Right, right. <laughs> what did you think it was? Do you think it was going to be like a Twilight kind of a... A little bit. But you know what? <laughs> I, I actually recently watched all the Twilights again, like a uh, while back. Did like, you? And I, I, yeah, I'm a Twilight guy now. Like You're kidding me. Yeah, I just, they're so, oh. they're so bad they're good. 
They're so bad, they're good. Man. <laughs> we'll I'll... talk about that though next time, too. All right, I have... I, I think... Uh, I won't convert. That's I think that's, that's going to be a wrap on the episode two of Cinemonics. So cool. Think, you know, we got past the pilot on episode two. Yeah, <laughs> man. Many more to come. Yeah. And hopefully some more from you in Paris. Man. Oh, yeah. So actually, I think our next podcast, we should... Uh, do at least a, a mini one, yeah. if not a full one, when I'm out there. And, uh, yeah, that'd be yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, right. you can tell me about some of the films that are out there. We can talk about that. <laughs> oui, oui. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Start so off from Nicholas. Yeah, this is Ellison and Bon Voyage. All right.